Okay, so I am here and I have Gerald with me and what I'm going to do is um, I am going to, he's on cam, so we're going to do like a pip and pip thing. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do this. Custom in here, and it's right here. You guys can see him. Where's the OK button? OK, oh, that's good. I think you can see him. Can you guys see him? Uh, yeah, I think I can. I can. I can see it. So here. Yeah. Uh, what did I just do? Hold on. Wait, it's still up. Wait. It's, I've got it so small that this is starting off well. Uh, wait, that's you. Uh, oh, I see what. Uh, hold on. It's putting underneath you for some reason. There, yeah, that's good enough. Good enough, right? All right, I'm gonna get away from get away from the light a little bit. Okay, um, there, there we go. It's like I have a halo. <laughs> so for you guys that have been waiting patiently, I thank you. I thank you, thank you. That's actually a mirror behind me. This is Gerald Clark, and um, I've been posting his link all day, and and I've done it before. It's um. The Anunnaki of Nibiru. Can you see that? And it's a bestseller on Amazon. It's got close to 200 reviews, almost five stars. And um, I've been trying to get this guy for months. So as you guys know, I'm thrilled. Uh, and something funny I wanted to tell Gerald, because we're going to talk a little bit about you know theology and politics and the players in politics and maybe a little bit of the Illuminati. Uh, theology, religion stuff, you know, the Pope and and whatnot. But a fun fact for Gerald is, you know, this website we're on, Battle Cam, is owned by a man named Alki David. And I don't know if it's his uncle or his uh, or his cousin, but uh, his, his uncle or cousin or brother, some say brother, is on the board of the Bilderberg Group. <laughs> the man who owns this website is actually affiliated with someone who sits on the board of the Bilderberg Group. I that always that it's his uncle. That's what I thought, but some say it's his brother. Um, do you guys hear an echo? Let me make sure I'm muted on here. Do you guys hear? Um, is is there an echo? You don't hear an echo. Yeah. I'll, anyway, so getting on with that, as long as there's no echo. If there's an echo, let me know, and I'll try to do something, but I don't know what I can do. Um, Gerald, I'm going to just let Gerald start off with whatever he wants to start off with and talk to us about um, some of this stuff. We, I played an introduction of you, Gerald, that you did with your wife, where you went into your background, how you saw a UFO when you were a kid, and, and, um, and I've told them that you have the, you're a, an electrical engineer, and you traveled worldwide, and and I've been researching this stuff, and and so you can go from there. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Yeah, can you can, guys hear him? Text, text me, let me know. <laughs> um, I want to thank uh, Ann for soliciting this interview. She's worked really hard to get <laughs> me to commit to it. It's not, a, it's not a normal venue that I would use, <laughs> and I don't know if people in this space have used it before, so hopefully they haven't, and we'll be pioneers. Um, that said, um, it sounds like a lot of religion and politics get discussed on this on this venue, and so I'm open to any of that. And I'll uh, I'll start with uh, a brief summary of what I've been able to glean about the Anunnaki through my studies, and some of the and some of the uh, pivotal discoveries that I found. I'll share those with you. And then we'll uh, take some of these cast of characters from the past, hopefully not turning it into named soup, and track them down to where they landed in various parts of the world and 
then by inference establish what they've done and who they're opposed to and, and which camp you landed in. I want to ask you really quick before you do that, like you have a lot of tables in your book, you know, that, that connects the dots and tells us who's who. And, you know, in the back, I, I've told you guys, I, we've played the epic of Gilgamesh in here and I've told you guys about Anne and uh, the, the dad Anne and or on and he had the sons Enki and Enlil and back here it says, you know, in Sumer, it gives the names in Greece and then Rome. So, is it the same story being retold in each civilization, or are they reincarnating as these new entities and being known as that? What? How is that? Well, we got to start with um, the idea that their lifespans exceeded ours by a tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. So, Consider this for a minute. If they lived on a planet that was truly in a 3,600-year elliptical orbit, like they said, then their lifespan and their year was based on the time it took their planet to go around the sun. Well, similarly, here on our planet, our year is based on how long it takes our planet to go around the sun. So they counted years, and you know, according to that, their elliptical path around the sun, which turned out to be 3,600 years uh, compared to ours. So when they landed here and had an emissary visit them, they realized that they were aging more quickly here like all the other local life, life uh, biological beings did. And it disturbed them greatly. So what you want to take away from that is when you look at the Sumerian king's list, oh, yeah. the, first, the first nine rulers ruled for 241,000 years. And each one of them served for eight shars. And a shar was 3,600 years. So the idea of one of them serving 28,800 years is phenomenal to us. Now, consider we've only been around, you know, a couple of hundred years in this country. Now, now they, they, were, they lived so long and showed up as different names across co different cultures that we viewed them as immortals. And they truly did have uh, mortal lives, but they were so much longer than ours that uh, so they, they were So they weren't gods. reincarnating, and it wasn't a story that was being retold. They were the same entity with being renamed. Exactly. And they did this a lot. They called it namesake substitution. They would hide their namesake in order to coalesce powers from somebody they conquered. Or even in Egypt, they would chip away the hieroglyphs of somebody they wanted to erase from history. Well, they were changing their names a lot. The one that really gave it away for me was Isis. And she was known as Isis in Egypt, but she was known as Ned Hartsog or Belit Ili and several other names in the Sumerian account. Well, she has a, 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 a stone artifice in Rome, if you've ever visited the city. I see. Okay. Where, where, on that, where on that stone Stella, she She's the recounts. sister. She's yeah. the, she was the sister of one of them, uh, I think Enki. And they had yeah, yeah. Well, she was Enki and Enlil's half-sister. And she recounted mm -hmm. all the different names that she's had through cultures. And she finally, at the end of this uh, declaration on this stone tablet, she says, but my true name is Queen Isis. And that, you know, So she tells you through all these cultures her different names. And you start to realize, wait, if she could do it, and she had a, half, a couple of half-brothers, and then you find out, well, there were 12 of them on this council. They all did it, too. And something so, else, reading the Lost Book of Enki's, uh, uh, the Lost Books of Enki, uh, they, you know, like the Egyptians, would wed and had their brothers, sisters, to keep it, the bloodlines pure. I don't think they were too concerned about the abnormalities that we are today, but that was, you know, because if a brother and sister of noble blood had, you know, gave birth to a baby, that baby would, would of course, supersede a, a baby that, that wasn't born of brother and sister. And I, they, it's almost like they're like, incest is wincest. They really supported this. They encouraged well, this. Well, there was a good reason for that, actually. If you look at, if you look at um, two different genetic studies that tracked us back to Africa 220,000 years, the genetic Eve and the genetic Adam study, um, in that account, you realize they, they looked at the Y chromosomal decay to figure out the Adam. And they looked at the mitochondrial DNA decay to figure out the female. Well, in, whenever a female contributes to the genetic material uh, for procreation, they also have mitochondrial DNA that, that goes beyond our, the normal set that a male has. So whenever a female contributes, they end up perpetuating their matriarchal uh, characteristics through that line. They did that intentionally to keep them more pure close to the source. So I wonder though if they had the abnormalities, you know, like, hush, up. sorry, hush. I wonder if they, um, you know, like today, if a, the recessive gene, you know, if you, you inbreed, 
and maybe they didn't have that problem given their genetic makeup because uh, you know, I gave you a link yesterday. I don't know if you, you looked at it, but it was about the Paracas skull findings. And for those of you that don't know, uh, in Peru they found these uh, elongated skulls. And it was a family of them. It was even a baby, an infant. And they did DNA uh, testing on them. And recently, only recently, they got the results back. And it turns out they're not human. They're, they're nothing like human. Matter of fact, they think they're so unlike humans that we wouldn't even be able to breed with them. They're, that yeah, our I, DNA that is so David different. David Childress' work uh, recently, he just published that. And, and it's really fascinating what he's zeroed in on yep. is, is the DNA. Because that's, that's really where the, the final mystery is going to be unveiled, where we see the point where the Anunnaki DNA was combined with our DNA. And actually, some people who've done some DNA analysis to look at where our chromosomes have been spliced, like number two has been spliced. Well, you know, this, this has to do with some of the clampdown that the Anunnaki did to us to keep us enslaved. We didn't get their full DNA. Well, like the, the last, the Anunnaki connection that we, we just watched, one of the last things they, they asked were, uh, what would they think about us today if they came back? Uh, personally, I don't think they've ever really left. But that's a good question. Uh, it's the okay. Move, I guess we could go into the the secret power. There's the secret shadow government that some people think is just a conspiracy for nuts like me. But uh, it's like the the those veteran today's articles I showed you. I think there's some truth in those, but but some very obvious non-truths. What so? You want to know about the secret societies and how they relate to the Anunnaki? Yeah, like are they are they here? You know, did you see the the NASA? Whenever I, I keep showing in my my channel this video of when Ison was doing its perihelion around the sun, and the solar flares kicked off this enormous object bigger than Jupiter, about four times exactly the way the Sumerians described it. There it is, and NASA had been been giving coordinates for. Not only ISON, but that thing. I guess in case somebody saw that, they'd go, oh, that must be ISON. But they haven't said anything about what that big object up there is, the second sun, people, some people are calling it. And there, there are a lot of uh, expert uh, astronomers out there who claim to really know their field. They have PhDs even, and they can't see anything. But they're not using infrared equipment. They're not going right, to see right. it. So, well, I think, I think there's, all, there's a lot of near-Earth objects that... We don't know what they are, and some are this various is, sizes. It's bigger than four times than Jupiter. If something the size of Jupiter came that close to the sun, our planet would be severely disturbed. And here's what I know about Nabu, just so you know. We know, based in 3760 BCE, that there was a passage in the city of Uruk because Anu was there observing it, and he denoted this in his account. So add 3,600 years to that, and you're back at 160 BCE. That was the last transit. Because you've got to add 3,600 years to that, and you'll get to the next transit. So it's quite a ways out. That doesn't mean they're not coming and going, and some never left. Mm -hmm. okay, so the, the idea that Nibiru has to be a perihelion for them to be coming and going is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Definitely I just wrong. think, I, for me, for, I, the reason why I mentioned the perihelion is because that's when we saw it. That's when, when the solar flares kicked off. That's when we could see this enormous object. And people are getting videos of this second sun, and... You've got people saying, well, until, you know, I get tangible evidence that that is something up there, it's, it's, it's a, what do they call it, lens flare. I am sorry, that is not lens flare. When there are no, you know, that's above the cloud. What are you people talking about lens flare? It, it kind of annoys me because I think it's there. I think it uh, explains a lot of the weather we're experiencing and, and, and the changes we're going through. And it happens, you know, every 3,600 years, major changes happen this planet. Right, right. Well, uh, one thing that uh, is a little bit confusing right now is the, the Mayan calendar end date came and went, and everybody thought, ah, well, nothing happened. It was no big deal. That's not true. Listen, uh, that, that calendar predicted that our solar system would be passing the, through the galactic center. When that happens, there's lots of Earth changes relative to the energy that's different at that center than the outside of that band. And we're definitely experiencing that. And all of our adjacent planets are experiencing the same gamma ray per influx that uh, Earth is, so it's not just a, you know, a green gas problem with the humans, you know, polluting too much. It's happening mm -hmm. everywhere, and it's because of this radiation that we're being exposed to as we go through the galactic center. And this is the height. This is the height of human consciousness. And it's like, right a, okay, they they claim they were mining for gold for their atmosphere. Their atmosphere had been destroyed, much like ours is being destroyed. Could this be what chemtrails purpose? Is. Everyone thinks that so we don't see what's up there. Could it be they're spraying something in the atmosphere much like they were doing on their own planet? 
It, well, it, it, I believe that is the case, and, and the reason is is because of what they're spraying. They're uh, they're putting um, a cheaper substance than gold. They're putting bar uh, other different heavy metals that can be ionized, and, and it looks like they're using barium sulfate and a few others. Right. Listen, suppose we're going through the galactic center, and they they're here. They want this to be their new headquarters, and they don't want the radiation destroying them because they're already very sensitive to it. Right. Wouldn't they be spraying it out there to shield themselves and us? Right. So that's that's really what I think is going on. I truly think so. So, and do you think that some have been here, like uh, the hollow Earth theory? I personally believe the Earth is hollow. I do. I believe. I mean, if you've been into it, if you've ever been exploring in a cave, you can get lost in a cave for days. It goes back for miles and miles. It's deep. It's long. It's expansive. And it's like uh, the other article I sent you in uh, 1930s, the man who found the underground tunnels in L.A. And I think those are everywhere. And it, could it be that they have never left, that they're procreating and living in a, in a sort of hollow earth with their super-duper technology? I mean, we've well, seen that, UFOs flying into volcanoes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, listen, every, there's, there's no such thing as a UFO. Oh. They're winged discs mm -hmm. that they've been using since they've been on this planet. They've been documented in the, uh, in the Mahabharata and various other accounts. Even uh, Thoth built a winged disc for Horus that went to war with Seth. <laughs> Uh, in the uh, Pyramid Wars. Well, could it be they so, changed their shape a little bit? We've seen those oh, cigar-shaped ones. Oh, they have lots of, ones. Different, lots of different shapes. There's lots of different shapes. And there's some that we've seen hovering around the sun that's bigger than our planet. Now, this is what I, I tell my skeptics. I'm like, okay, you're a skeptic. Okay, that might be debris or that might be, you know, yes, that could be us with technology we're unaware of. But we're not making crafts larger than our planet and, and no, sending no. them off. Well, what's really funny is, you know, their symbols all the way back to the Temple of Persepolis on the cliffs of the Histun in Persia and all through Egypt was the winged disc. What's a winged disc? It's a disc that can fly, okay? It's that simple. And they've had them since the, since the word go. It's nothing new to them. Right. So, so we're calling them unidentified flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, listen, the unidentified part is we replicated them in World War II in Germany. They have this technology. That's another and thing. And so a lot of the craft you see around are our military craft now that we reverse engineered. So, uh, so how are you going to distinguish them now? So do you believe there are, uh, like um, like the defense, the Canadian defense minister, like he said, do you believe there are many species of alien or, or just the Anunnaki? Uh, well, uh, recently, actually last year, uh, Paul Hellyer, who was Paul serving Hellier. the Canadian government for 23 yeah. years, yes. he, his final post was as the Canadian defense minister, and he did a 25-minute video that's on YouTube in front of Congress disclosing what he knew from his position as defense minister I that, that there, were, there were at least four alien species, up to 20, that had been on this planet for thousands of years. And then he went on to say, because of his introduction to Charles Hall, who wrote the Millennium Hospitality books, Charles Hall was a U.S. Air Force sergeant that was stationed at... Uh, this base in Nevada where he had an encounter with them daily for three years and wrote five books about it. And he called them the tall whites and basically they were studying him. They were, we weren't mm -hmm. studying them. And he said that base there in Indian Springs, Nevada, just north of Vegas, that underground base there, our Air Force people are guarding it. They're living there trading advanced military secrets for that ability Bill to Snyder. be there. Now, what, what's their agenda? What are they doing there? Bill Snyder. I mean, I don't think that guy was gutted and his hand melted off uh, for the sake of disinformation. Um, yeah, well, no, no that's, that's the thing. So here's the, here's the takeaway. Everybody wants to assign an agenda to these folks. Yeah. Listen, we knew what their agenda was back in the Atrahasis account. Which when, was? When they, which was the very first uh, document that I mentioned in my book. This, this document is so important. I want all your, reader, your readers and listeners to read that. It, and read it on the Internet. Don't, you don't have to yeah. buy my book. Read that. And in that account, you will find out that Enlil was here to destroy us. And Enlil. Our progenitor. Enlil, yes. Yes. We have lots of other names, right? And that's, this is so, this is what, okay, I don't know which to move into first. I, I kind of yeah. want to wait and do the theology bit at the end. Okay. Let's no, do the, 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 poli the politic bit. Okay, the players. Okay. The players. Okay, yeah. so let's suppose that the two main brothers, that were half-brothers, were essentially like the Hatfields and McCoys. Yeah. They, they had battles back on their planet, disagreements. They brought that same um, angst to this planet, and it, it played out over a very long time. And guess what? It's still playing out. Enki and Enlil were fighting over the, the 
title of Lord of the Earth, which right. is rank 50 on the Anunnaki Council. Enki had it first. And Enki his wanted brother, to save us. Yeah, yeah, so his brother came after him about 5,000 years later, took over the bond heaven earth functions, meaning communicating with Nibiru, getting all the gold back, uh, and all the issues doing command functions, like a military commander, essentially. Right. Whereas okay. Enki was more like a scientist. scientist. You know, he was the guy uh, making all these things happen. Would you call him uh, the human progenerator? Would you go that far as to say he engineered us? Well, in the Otter Hastings account, um, the miners that they brought from their planet here finally had enough after many, many shars working the mines in South Africa. They revolted, surrounded Enel's house with Allah leading them, who was his son, Nanar Sin. By the way, Allah, the moon god, is Enlil's son. Wow. Allah, the Muslim's Allah. Yes, it must be. Yes, that's it's, right. It's Enlil's son. That's right. That's and, right. And and this is this is this is the stuff where I get where I, so, I, 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 so I wrap I your head around it. this. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Enlil, and Allah Moses. is his son. How do you like that? Yeah, Moses. Moses was uh, the the God for Moses, or Moses is God. That's Enlil. Okay. And well, then, well, man, no? actually, uh, uh, Akhenaten uh, and, and uh, uh, Tutankhamun were opposed to each other. And Akhenaten was, all of a sudden, he imp imposed monotheism in Egypt, just like Enlil did in, in the Levantine. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out it wasn't. I don't believe Akhenaten. Moses was not Enlil. I believe it was a, a general that, that was a, in the offspring of his lineage, just like Abram was. Okay, So I don't, I don't think he was the same as Enlil. That's just my opinion. So but, yeah. who do you think was Moses' God? Because that sounds like, you know, God. It was Enlil. It was Enlil. So Moses' God was Enlil. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. Well, they weren't the same being as all of them. What do you mean the same being? Uh, Moses was a servant to him. Oh, oh, but yeah. He, no, yeah, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, Mo yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I don't think Moses was in law. I'm saying his God, the the jealous God, the tablets and, and all that. That his God was was that in law. Right. Is Yahweh is Jehovah. Somebody wanted to know really quick. Uh, how many Anunnaki do you believe are still left? Um, well, as of as of the time they moved into Greece. The Anunnaki Council of Twelve became the Greek pantheon. So Zeus was Enlil, and Poseidon was Enki. Okay. Yes. And Ningshida, Enki's son, by the way, who was Hermes, Mercury, um, yeah. he was the caduceus bearer. So he was an Enki. I keep that in mind. So the guy that was bringing us knowledge to get out of our enslavement, it was him. So Lucifer is being made out by Enlil people uh, to be Enki. Is that well, am I right? Well, let, well, let's do this by elimination. In Persia, the Zoroastrian religion had two main gods. One of them was the destroyer, one was the creator. And they had summarized the Anunnaki Council of Twelve as the two top ranking beings, en Enki and Enlil. Enki was a Hermosa, the god of light, I'm telling the answer right now. <laughs> and Enlil was Aramon, the, the great destroyer. So the god of light and wisdom, he had the sacred eye, all that, that's Enki. So he got demonized all through history by Enlil. Yeah, so they're calling Enki Lucifer, am I correct? Like the serpent? I, I, believe, that's, I believe that's correct. Uh, that's, that's what I think as well. And then Jesus Christ... That's not the same as Satan, though, because in the Gospels, Paul referred to Pergamon as the seat of Satan. Remember the, the little post I did earlier where they had a bronze bull where they burned people inside because they liked the smell of human flesh? That was Enlil. That's his temple, the Temple of Zeus in Pergamon. So, right. so the real destroyer made the creator into the devil, and they just reverse roles. And that's been going on for the last zodiacal house. That's what I and thought. And, and Jesus I'm here, Christ. I'm here to change that. I'm telling you. I'm and Jesus Christ is? Ningshida. A woman. No. Wait. Enki's son that was the caduceus bearer wait, who was raising consciousness in Egypt. Wait. The same one. Ningshida. Oh, wait. That's Enki and, and Nasha Gog. That's their, their sibling. Yeah, their child. Yeah, but he was known as Thoth. He was known as Hermes. He had many, many names. And by the way, he wrote the Emerald Tablets and told you. Quetzalcoatl is Jesus? Yes, it is. How about that? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he had many, many names. He was he had many incarnations. So it was Enki and, and his sister, whom he married, by the way, people, that their child is Jesus. And so... It, uh, it, well, no, no. Actually, uh, Ninhartsog's child was... He was not the son of Enki and then Hartog. He was the son of Ereshkigal, who was another. Actually, with, this is really crazy. She was the daughter. Mm. Uh, she was in the grand. She was a granddaughter of Enlil. So what Ningshida was born to do was to bridge the family lines between the Enlites and the Enkiites. That's why he was the messenger. Okay. And Anu specifically appointed him to try to 
mitigate some of this Hatfield McCoy crap. Wait, going this on. Nigashita, Nigashita. He's Thoth. That's Thoth, and then you have Slash Jesus. That's right. And He's that's also name. in the same as Jehovah. No, Jehovah. Well, you've got it in the same thing, Egypt. You've got Jehovah. Uh, sorry, Jehovah in law. Sorry. Yeah, Jehovah is in law. You're looking at it upside down. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it upside down. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to confuse people even more. But Niga, Niga Shida and Enki, their offspring is Jesus, right? Well, uh, Isn't no. That right? Enki is our creator. He would be what you would call God if you were to say who created us. He did. Right. And who was his son that died for us? It was his son, Ningshida. Listen, if you compare the Caduceus with the Roman cross, Enel was saying to Ningshida, you're not waking anybody up. So that, was, that Mary symbol, the, that symbol, was Mary that the symbol. true mother? And Enki, well, <laughs> who was the mother? Well, according to my genealogy table, it was a Reshignal. And she she was another full-blown Anunnaki female, but she was in Enlil's lineage. Oh. Yeah, oh. Yeah. Imagine that. So. No, that's, that's wild. So, <laughs> so Enki... it's really crazy. Yeah, he was not the son of uh, Nidhartsog and Enki. Otherwise, he would have been in line to rule, and right? So, something I told them that's, that's kind of funny is uh, how um, the Pope likes to wear a Saturn hat. And Saturn usually is a representation of on the, the actually his his Dagon fishhead hat is actually a replica of the fishhead hat that belonged to Ink, none other than Enki. What is going on in the Catholic Church? I'm gonna tell you right now is they're disparaging the true creator Enki because it's been infiltrated by Enel and has been since 19. But they know who the human progenitor is. But see, I, I what That's I right, they do. what I told them in my channel earlier is I thought the Pope wearing a Saturn hat was to signify their worship, the kind of place Sweden and all of this. They're they're that's they're not saying they worship the father of Enki and Enlil. It's almost like they don't want to be part of Enki no, or Enlil. Incorrect. That is incorrect. That's that's because I know the it's entire Catholic hat. Church was started on behalf of Enlil and has been run by them ever since. So, so the, the prophecy not, about, about you know, in Revelations and all of that, you know, who's coming back and, you know, Jesus is going to come back and if you worship this one, you're going to go to hell. And Who wrote that? Who is going to win? Who do you think is going to win? How is it going to play out? <laughs> How is it going to play out? Yeah. Well, the, well, it plays out according to the zodiacal term limits that they set up their rulership by. So the last 2,000 years, a, a zodiacal house lasts for 30 times 72, which is 2,160 years. And we're just entering Capricorn, or uh, yeah, Aquarius. So as soon as we leave Pisces into Aquarius, guess what? It's Anunnaki Council recomposition time. And in the rank, uh, the God of, or the Lord of the Earth rank 50 is getting changed out. And this time, it's going to Ningshita, who is Jesus. Okay? Everybody, this is the Christian belief, right? And the new kingdom coming. Well, this is the true reality. Is it? It's an Enkiite's turn. The last Zodiacal house belonged to an Enlilite. They seem to ping pong back and forth. And so, what is Enki or is Enlil trying to to trump them and say, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to beat you and keep it"? Or well, in between the zodiacal house changes, and this is where it gets messy. There's a cleanup process. It's almost like a boat. So they have their influence in the culture, and whoever follows them, they belong to them. And at the time that the zodiacal house changes. Whatever happens, whether you call it rapture, tribulation, or whatever, they do a cleanup process in between. There's a serious cleanup process going on because this time it belonged to the Great Destroyer. So, do so they wipe out they whoever was up. being worshipped prior? And they wipe every like right. you've been worshipping this so, right so you're now, out. Right now, it's it's Enlo and Inerta who was Apollo, and they are they have taken the reins of the most powerful religious and the most powerful political institution, the United States and the Vatican. And they are reigning in destruction. And I, I take it they're heading up the Majestic 12. But what's trippy to me is you hear these people talk about their near-death experiences, or, and they, they mention Jesus, or a voice calls out and say, Jesus, and you'll be saved, and they do, and they are. Do you, yeah, well, listen, Ningxia was, he was, he thought he was running. I mean, how can they have control of our souls? Well, if you go back and read when they created us, they actually sacrificed one of their fellow gods, he was probably a king. And put, well, his name was Yahweh, and they took his energy and put it into the new being. They have, they have the ability to control energy and matter, which we cannot understand. Heaven and hell, truly. So, so. but they also in your book, or in the book of Enki, one of these books, they talk about how they acknowledge a god higher than themselves. Like we're worshiping an alien, but they're <laughs> exactly. worshiping. A god of all, a creator That's of right. all. That's right. So in the 
so, of Kabiki, I think, that you're reading. As his scribe starts uh, taking his out-of-this-world stylus and writing on stone, isn't that amazing? Yeah. He 40 days to get it done. 40 was Inky's number. And some of it doesn't That's make sense <laughs> to me. It's like, it, it, some of it sounds like a fantasy. It doesn't sound possible. I'm not saying it's not, but it's... I lost, I lost the so, previous question. So who, what, so if we're worshiping aliens. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So the creator of all, who is that, right? So everybody goes, well, if the, if the Anunnaki are not our gods, then who are, right? Because now I'm lost. And well, they get yeah, mad yeah, if they worship like the, the creator of all. Well, they think, look well, at us as arrogant since they created us. Or are we supposed to well, have respect? Well, actually, let me ask you this. Is it possible that there's a creator of all who created the seeds of all life? Maybe he lives in some other galaxy somewhere else, and they just happen to be drifting through space, through panspermia, and they land on various places, and they evolve into beings that grow up to have a conscious co-creation with their creator, and go, oh, isn't that fun? Is that fun for you that you did that for us? You know? <laughs> Whatever. The whole but, manipulating uh, of but, souls, but, but though. But if that went on, but if that went on, and then an advanced being came to this planet, found a, a bipedal hominid walking on the steps of Africa, and said, well, we recognize those, because uh, we had some of those on our planet. Let's jumpstart them a little bit to help us with this mining operation. No, no foul, no harm, right? Right. That's what they did. I know, so... So we have two creators. We have the creator of all, and then we have a genetic engineer who so modified it. Should we really be going back to a polytheistic thing, or the, or, or are they going to get mad unless if, if, if we do that? I mean, how does it's that almost, work? It's almost like a democracy, now that you bring that up. I mean, so no... In the of these council changes, they're vying for your vote. I they're mean... They're vying for your vote. Are you going to vote for Enlil and... Nanar Sin, or knowing, are you going to vote for Yankee and Nick Sheeta? That's really that, what it comes down to. Well, knowing that they can manipulate our souls, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of heavy. And and also, right, if they yeah. can manipulate our heavy. souls, reincarnation possible? Are they doing uh, that? Well, yeah, I do believe that is. I think, I, and, and this is an interesting part I brought in my book that a lot of people didn't catch on is, I'm, being, I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, so I'm looking at chakras and energy and matter and things like and that. And I did and, notice that. And, uh, and you and left they, me with a big listen. question mark at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, Enki was a premier scientist. He, he designed us knowing about the electromagnetic spectrum, communicating with us, having various frequencies affect our uh, extreme low frequency that happens in our brain. You know, he, he knew what he was doing. And he created us with ascension capabilities that are very much mm -hmm. suppressed. And I like, to, I like to bring those out because, listen, we're in this weird simulator and we can choose creation or destruction, but... Notice the creation part. It's a very narrow gate, like was talked about in the Bible. There's not many people are getting through it. It seems like a lot of people are getting destroyed. So uh, I think I think we need to balance that out a little bit, don't you? Well, it's like the, the 95, 97% of our non-coded DNA that they don't know what to do with. And and, and I, I'm certain that's the keys to uh, ascension. But what about this, this dark energy and these people who become uh, inhabited by what some called demons. I mean, what is that? It's it's like what um, the Gnostics believe. Yeah. You know, this well, is this all. Is, this was in the Lost Book of Enoch as well. The uh, the medieval church was extremely frightened of the concept of a watcher, and they knew in the Lost Book of Enoch that's why it didn't end up in the can canonical Bible. But these watchers, these Ajiji, these advanced beings that they brought from Buru with them to do their. What uh, are Ajijis? Are those the Greys? What are they? No, no, they were. I don't believe so. I believe they looked very much like uh, the Anunnaki. I think they were a subset of the Anunnaki. They were the slave portion of it, you know, in a caste kind of system. And we have them to thank for our current system, which I think blows, by the way. Yeah, well, some of them were very advanced. And when you read the Lost Book of Enoch, there were several of them that taught humans kind of secret knowledge uh, about metallurgy and a whole bunch of other things. Well, magic. Uh, that the Enel absolutely didn't want them to know. Well, it's so. like King Solomon, they say, uh, built his temple with demons. He was able to manipulate them with a the black magic. You know, you've got the the Book of Thoth. You've got Marduk. Marduk's teachings. He supposedly had some kind of black magic, and people today are still trying to, to use it, and some claim that it works. I'm kind of scared to, to go into that because... Um, uh, also, uh, I think it was King David, they said one of the, the hidden books in the Bible or lost books in the Bible, um, and I don't remember which one, but they said you needed to be 40 years of age at least and uh, educated in the ways of your spirituality before trying to even delve into magic. I don't know if you know what I'm referring to or not. No, I don't know. I, I've, I've looked at various people and various seekers on various paths. And I, I can only share what seemed to work on my path. And the idea that you can do 
some crazy breath or chant some spell and get yourself through a spiritual gate. Uh, possible, more likely, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to invite some entity to want to occupy your body, and it's not going to be a happy ride That's, you, that's so. what I'm afraid of, because I do well, believe ghosts exist. There's a guy that comes to this very channel that had to move homes because he had a, a very real ghost in his home that was harassing him right, and his wife. Right. Well, I think, uh, while you're speaking of that, um, speaking of our homes, imagine that uh, some energy forms could occupy your body to the extent that you didn't own your own energy. Mm. And I, so, so imagine you have seven chakras and you were working on, on number three is working, but everything above that's not. Well, what do you think kind of energy can occupy the chakras that are not working? Because each one is a quantized level of consciousness, according to the Hindu. So you believe our religion. soul is energy. That's what I believe. Our, Absolutely. Our and when you reach the highest energy, that's when you're ready to graduate from the simulator and, and ascend. Why so, is it that some that. are stuck here, haunting homes, and not... Or is it that they're not well, being permitted, or they just... Well, I think there's a lot of fallen beings that never um, were allowed to ascend and, and maybe not be able to re-materialize into a body if they're stuck here um, until certain karma gets worked out. Do you think um, it's possible that our energy moves to other galaxies, other realms, you know? Well, I think it, I think it, I think it occupies all dimensions simultaneously. Yet, yeah, like the parallel realities that we've lived every decision we could have made. Do you think that's happening? One more time. That we're, we, every decision we ever could have made in life, we're living it somewhere. Somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you're, you know, you're, this whole simulator is designed for you to evolve to the highest place where you're a conscious co-creator with him. It's about apotheosis. And this is what so you think that we can, well, we, you, you subscribe to the belief that we can all become our own gods. I've kind of been shocked well, about that. God in terms of the sense and I don't even like the word God. I like the term co-creator. Because, I, I, you know, you've got a creator of all, and then you've got all these other beings that wanted to promote themselves to be venerated. Uh, you know, so, the <laughs> idea of having yourself called a God, I mean, that's just that's just serving your ego in the first place. And what kind of person would believe that's a God in the first place? And what is it, the, the book of Enoch? Uh, who is Enoch dealing with? Well, actually, the, if you get really heavy into the lost book of the Enochian tradition, you'll realize that it was none other than Thoth, who was Ninshita. So he was the son of Enki. So, Je so Jesus. So, yes, so, he's dealing, so he's dealing now with Now go in and read the account of his book. But no, if, Jesus is, of if, if Jesus is Enki's, no, no, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and no, he's the good no, guy, no. And, and who, when Jesus talks about dealing with uh, a Satan, is, is he talking about uh, Enlil? Yes, he's talking about Enlil. And, and, it's, it's, and his followers. So there. in the that's Bible, go ahead. no, I, that's, so this is what I, I tell people on my channel. The Bible, it's obviously, there are two major gods, players being represented. You've got the jealous, you know, uh -huh. let's let's kill people for no reason God, and you've got this so forgiving, gentle, loving, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, love for all God. And I believe that they use Jesus' name. And Jesus even said people will, will speak for me or as me. And that seems to have been done in the Bible because there are there are things that supposedly are quotes by Jesus that don't sound very Jesus-like but more Enlil like um, if, if you get what I'm saying. Like, um, you, have to, you have to stop and go, okay, you got this set of books that were put together by the Catholic Church and released in 343 A.D. No other books were account. allowed in there. They were telling their story, and the progenitor of that organization was Enlil. So add two and two together. You're going to get Enlil's perspective through the whole thing. He cut it. Look, Genesis 126, he cut everybody else out of the council, said he created man. He had nothing to do with it. It was Enki and Nenartsov. So he ever, lied and lied and lied. Have you ever That's prayed to Enki, personally? Um, actually, I have, I don't know, what, I would say I would commune with him. I don't know about the, the concept of prayer. I, you know, I want to I wanna know who these beings Is he are. Dead I'm not going to ask them to do things for me that I, you know, I don't even know. Do you think he's but, dead and his and his offspring are answering uh, any communications people are trying to make with him? Ab absolutely, and they have all through history. And actually, if you go back to the Atrahasis, Zeusudra himself, who was Noah, while Enlil was trying to destroy the humans, because after 600 years of the primitive worker program, he decided that he had enough of their noise. He just started introducing diseases into the populace. Like remember they're the doing now. Ages? Well, yeah, remember the Middle Ages with the Black Death? That was no accident. Which is a good time. And the soccer disease, and all the other things that he did. And it's happening all over. Humans, so now we it's happening again, 
and it, obviously we've got this uh, shadow government they call it the majestic 12 uh, there are rumors uh, you know like a I don't know if you you've heard about uh, some speculate Prince William has was a uh, Play, like his DNA was played with. You've got all these monarchs still living, like Prince of uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth, and they all think they come from a special bloodline. I'm going to guess maybe they think they come from Enlil's, and they're really into astronomy and astrology, and have been all throughout history. So, could it be that William is the the the, the Antichrist that was prophesied, or is that Enlil garbage that we should ignore? Well, actually, the entire think of the Hatfields and McCoys. There's not just one person that's opposed to Nishida taking over the council. There's a whole lot of them, okay? <laughs> so you, you make up this term, the, the Antichrist. Well, you know, there was a lot, there were a lot of them opposed to this, and they were at war, and there were multiple secret societies. Do the first one started as the Royal Dragon Court in Babylon yeah. with Marduk and Nishida. They were both, you know... Are, are we living in the, these prophetic times that we read about in Revelations? Are we living in that time, do you think? We actually are. Now think about this. If you had a being who was controlling the Levantine and was doing, giving prophetic messages to people, which mostly were destructive, by the way, if you notice. And I'll, give you an, I'll give you, for instance, I'll bring you to the current headlines. Um, one of the requirements for this Armageddon, this battle at Megiddo to happen in Revelations, was uh, certain checkpoints, like uh, the destruction of Damascus, for instance. Right, mm -hmm. it was Isaiah 17, 1 and 2. And, and it's then, taken thousands then the very of next years. Thing is, oh, and then the next thing that's going to happen, this next destructive thing is, we're, you know, Damascus is going to become a ruinous heap, and then you're going to have the Ezekiel All 38, Gog, Magog War. Well, listen, this, this, think about mm -hmm. this from the standpoint of the council change. They knew this was going to happen in between the zodiacal houses. There was going to be a cleanup period. So his prophetic... You know, Whose prophecy is it, though? This is all animals. This is all animals. Listen, it's all destructive. There's going to be this huge war, a third of the population. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Georgia Guidestones. Okay? Georgia Guidestones. Yeah, exactly. The so, ley lines. And, and that, so. that brings me to, uh, you know, Saddam Hussein thought he was Nebuchadnezzar, reincarnated. Right. Uh, and then all this fight over Israel, because is that what That's they believe to be the, they believe the last portal, the last functioning portal on this planet to be there? Is that the case? Well, you brought up a really interesting story. In 1991, Saddam Hussein brought a team of Germans into Uruk, which is very far south where the Tiger Smith the Euphrates, okay? And it was still kind of, it still had water there, and he rerouted all of the, the water, a huge engineering feat so that he could dry out that area while he's being attacked by the world superpower so that he could find um, this portal that you speak of in the city of Uruk. Well, they also found Gilgamesh's grave there because he was the king of that city in 2900 BC. Well, in that account, uh, you need to realize who Nebuchadnezzar was. Yes. Who? Nabu was one of uh, the sons of Marduk. Mm. Or, uh, Enki. I'm sorry, Enki. Oh, okay. okay. So he was, he was actually in that region. So the idea that he was reincarnated by Nabu, wow, that this is this is highly possible. Uh, what yeah. I want you to walk away with is... Well, he's a leader. He's a world leader. Why wouldn't they communicate to him like they did Moses exactly. or anyone else? Yeah, exactly. And, we, and, and, and unfortunately, we've left a little bit of Marduk out of this conversation. We have. And Hartog a little bit. But, yeah, but uh, and several of the other players. And that's okay, because it'll have turned into name soon. But, uh, no, I want to hear. But knowing that the followers of the Crescent Moon flag are following Nanarsin, who is Enlil's son, to their destruction... I hope they're listening because most of, a lot of my readers are in Egypt and Pakistan and, and Iraq. And, and it could be they, the Bilderbergers are spying on us. They knew about these Sumerian gods, and when they finally see the table of who was who, they have to ask themselves, "Why is Jehovah fighting with His Son Allah over this region?" Well, this why? is this is why I want to tell you about the man owning this. Uh, being related to someone who sits on the board of the Bilderbergers, because I'm convinced. I mean, this is kind of. I'm, I love this site. It's a fun site, but it's it's a trashy site. Let's just let's just throw that out there. But it's fun. Anything goes on this site. We've seen everything debaucherous that you could see on this website, and I can't help but think, and several of us think this, that this site is a social experiment, backed by, with the with the uh, support or the encouragement of Alfie's relative who sits on the Bilderbergers. It would not surprise me if they spied this crap all the time. It would well, no, 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 no. Now, take, now consider what you just said, because listen, it's like 
they're, they're, these, these two are on a council together. And yeah, they may not like each other, but they have to cooperate, you know, occasionally. Well, if if you consider one of them being the destroyer and one of them being the crater, it's almost like, imagine them sitting at a table going, yeah, I'll bet you a dollar I can get that one. No, nah, that one's mine. Nah. That's what's going on. It's truly going on that way. So there's this tit for tat release of information. This kind of disclosure helps people go, well, I think I'm caught in the Godspell. <laughs> and uh, how do I get out? And it, it's a very uncomfortable thing. We've been exposed to it for 2,000 years of lies. And now, all of a sudden, your whole life is interweaved with these belief systems that you find out are true, and it's very hard to deal with. I, I, I mean, why, do you believe there's only one f functioning portal left over there, and that's why they're fighting over that territory? Um, well, I have good information to believe that the last known functioning one is beneath the Chamber of Women in the Temple Mount. Which is where I'm um, shaking well, that's, that. well, that's on. that's in Jerusalem. Jeru okay, that's so it is. That's where the main temple is. That's where so the Al-Aqsa Mosque was just designated as the site. So it is last Israel. Week where the, where the Jewish people are going to build a new temple. So it is As soon as Israel. they announce that, right, this is, this is time for the abomination, the abominations to happen where Enlil shows up in, in, in Jerusalem and declares himself as God. Do you this think Enlil's still this alive? Is the false, this is the false action that's going on. You betcha that's what's going on. Do you think Enlil's it's still alive? Happen. He's going to declare himself as God very shortly. As a matter of fact, just, last, old. <laughs> just, just two days ago, um, the gal from the World Bank, who was the lawyer, Heard. He's Karen Hurd. Yes, Hurd. yes, yes, yes. She yes. just announced that she was involved over 20 years of memos working back and forth at high levels of finance, and she came out and said, and I put this video on my Facebook, that there are there's another alien species in the Vatican that's predicating financial doctrine, has been for a very long time, and we know who they are. And it's it's the, Zeus and Apollo, and they're here to clean up. You think it's the Anunnaki? Out. Watch so out. Enlil is Enlil's gonna wipe out all of his followers, or Enki's gonna wipe out his followers? Which one? No, Enki, Enki is not known to wipe out his followers. He's the benefactor of mankind. He's the one that tried to save us. Okay. Yeah. Enlil yeah. is gonna wipe out his followers, and so is Nanar. That's Absolutely. you know, and that's kind of funny because I I always thought the true Satan figure, or the true Lucifer figure, doesn't seem to have a lot of uh, love for his followers. I mean, look at Aleister Crowley. Alistair Crowley, wealthy, wealthy, wealthy guy in his day, and the world at his feet, you know, we know how far Alistair Crowley went with his devotion to Lucifer, and what happened to Alistair Crowley? He died penniless. He didn't have shit when he died. I mean, here's this guy who gave his life for Lucifer, and what thanks did he get? None. Right. None. Right. Well, and, see, I think part of the, part of the, the issue, the, the, the name substitution and the demonization of this one and that one, it's been going on for so long. Now if somebody sees a pentagram, they don't realize in one orientation it represents Nin Hartsog, the medical officer who is our female, you know, Mother Earth, and in the, in the other orientation, which is the five-pointed star on our flag, represents Ning Shida. Oh. It represents Ning Shida, yeah. So all of a sudden you go, well, well, if the United States was originally supposed to be the New Atlantis, as Thoth yes, declared, yes. and and all the symbols are there in in the United in Washington D.C. for it to be the New Atlantis. So why is it turning into the NWO where yes. all of our rights are being stolen? Well, <laughs> think about this designation of this place to be. It has been chosen to be destroyed because of it's it's going to be the New Atlantis. And who's doing the destroying? The ones of an Indian Springs base, and and Nerta. That's who. But it's, so how is it that our world leaders are, are basically they're Luciferians? They're they I don't know they think do they think they're worshiping Enki, but in fact they're that's, worshiping that's Enlil. That's a confusing. That's a confusing part when you add a term to someone and call them a Luciferian. But they um, they I was like when, well you've seen you've seen the videos of them. Right, right, right. That, well, they, you know the Catholics have a thing called the, the, the Lucifer scope up on. Uh, uh, Mount Graham in Tucson, you know, are they looking for Inky to come, or are they, you know, so, so the real question is, um, whatever label you give Inky, he was our genetic creator. Hey, I'm, 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 a, I'm, so, 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 I'm, at that point, you can, you can throw I'm him out a doubt pro Inky, but what, what I wonder is, they have to know, our leaders have to know our true origins, just like the monarchs do, just like the Vatican does, I think they know, they're all, you know, the Masons, they've got their thing, not just the Masons, I mean, all of these these little organized 
clubs that they belong to, but you see the video of them at the Bohemian Grove and they're, hail Lucifer, hail Lucifer. Do they believe they're worshiping Enlil or do they believe they're worshiping Enki? And that's what I want to know because they're not actually worshiping Enki. Well, and you have I'll, give you, I'll give you a clue. In Bohemian Grove, there's a very large statue of Moloch. Oh. Moloch, they perform a cremation of care ceremony. Yes. That's acting like sacrificing a child to this being. Which Let I think they actually have. Let me remind you who mandated that on Mount, on Mount Moriah. It was Enlil who asked Abram to bring his kid to be sacrificed. Wasn't Enki ever did anything like that? Human sacrifice is an Enlilite thing. That's what I think, but I want to know. They who are it. serving. They are serving the great destroyer because he's in charge right but now. But I want to know if they was, know that. If they know they're. They do. If they're that they're worshiping Enlil. And, they truly do. And then and then you've got your Christians who believe Enki is Satan and and they and they trash talk him. They don't even know they're worshiping Jesus, who's actually. Well, who wrote the book that made him that? It was Enlil. Yeah, oh, and oh, yeah, they yeah. think that's one God in the Bible. They try to follow it as best they can without even understanding the content of it. They they're worshiping two right. gods in this Bible. They're trashing exactly. the, they're that's, that's the thing. See, there's lots of truth in the Bible. The problem is there's a few lies in there that are designed to really pull the carpet out from it. And so if you're, you know, if you're talking to Nishida who gave you the power in your sacrum to wake up, and then at the same time you go, uh, praise Enlil, you, well, just, you just wiped yourself out. Well, you have a lot of people who, uh, you know, if, if, if you tried to explain this about Enki to them, they'd be, oh, I'm not going to study that. That sounds like devil stuff to me. And yeah. not realizing that's, that's the entity to save that's them. Why, that's why I want people to go read the Atrahasis, because they'll see Enki and Enlil named in the same account that has never been refuted. Zechariah Sitchin had nothing to do with the interpretation. Now, listen, I'm no, a he was, a, he was afraid to go there. because of how he's been demonized by certain people who... Heiser, to say it, Heiser. No honor whatsoever. I wanted you to tell in everyone <laughs> in here, for those of you that have come in my channel saying, and Sitchin's been debunked, and you give me a link to Michael Heiser. Now, I've told you before, Heiser is a known, admitted Christian. Now, I'm going to pose a question to you guys listening. If Sitchin was right about everything else, how is it that he's wrong about this one fundamental thing about aliens? Now, I'm, I'm going to let uh, Gerald tell you something about Heiser, because I just found that out today when he told me. Not only is Heiser... A Christian, he is funded by. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make any in inferences about where he's getting his funding. What I will say, when I read his doc, his pricey, his resume to find out where he's coming from, he is an enlightened core to the being. <laughs> the and Jewish... He's done everything he can to justify the Hebrew belief on Enlil's version of the Old Testament. And he, he's caught in the God's belt. I really feel sorry for him. Heiser is being like that. Well, you won't say it. I will. Hero. You won't say it. I will. Heiser is being funded or supported by, uh, I don't know if you call it a Jewish council, a Jewish organization, but this is where Heiser's bias comes in. He's not only a Christian. I'm not saying he's Jewish, but his studies, his support group, whatever, is Jewish funded, Jewish backed, and you want to bear that in mind when you guys come in my channel throwing out Michael Heiser links to realize that he is he's connected to the, the Jewish organization, and I, nothing against Jewish people because there are loads of lovely Jewish people out there, just like there are loads of lovely Christians out there, but you do have tainted Christians, tainted Jewish people, and... Um, like with most religions, they spoil religion for everyone else because they, it's, well, oh, that, when you were speaking, when you were talking about the five-point star, Hillary, or the, on our flag, did you see the video of Hillary Clinton at one of her uh, speeches and the, the flag she had, she had made, a, or had a flag made where all the stars were upside down? Really? Yes. Wow. How interesting. Well, listen, yeah, if and that was done, she was, she was venerating ISIS. That, uh, oh, ISIS. You think <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Do you yeah. think she's supported by ISIS? And is ISIS a good well, one or a bad one? The inverted pentagram, if you go in Lawrence Gardner's book, I'm a big fan of Lawrence Gardner. He was a supreme genealogist from, from Europe. Anyway, and, and on, he was connected to many of the major secret societies, including the Templars. Right. But uh, 
in his book, he talks about that symbol specifically. And, the pentagram. And, and actually, I went and looked it up. I found that symbol on a brick in Mesopotamia. It was it was a pentagram. Yes, it's there. It's so there. it's a pentagram. Is it back. is it Luciferian or is it Isis? Uh, it's no, always it connected was, to Luciferian. No, it was Ningshita's symbol. He was the black goat of Mendes. Uh, he he had lots of different names. Remember I told you, he he was a master of reincarnation. And his brother Marduk was so jealous of him because he couldn't figure out how his father Enki had taught him all this stuff and didn't teach him that. Well, is this a good guy or a, guy, a bad guy? The one Who's that? The, 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 well, Isis and, and the other guy you just mentioned. N well, Ningshidi. Well, Ningshida was Enki's second born son. Okay. okay Marduk was his first born son. Okay. Ningshida was born kind of as a. He, his role all along was to be the messenger and the person that would wake up humanity. So in the in the account where um, the first Adam was taken to Nibiru to meet Anu, mm -hmm. Enki wrote a tablet, said, this is what I did to create him, sent his son Ningshida and Demuzi, his, son, his other son, with um, the Adapa to Nibiru. He went there, basically they told him he's not allowed to have immortal life. We gave him intelligence, constrained his life to 120 years. Yeah, Here's his lot. Just... And here's his lot. They sent him back to the earth with Ningshida, and Anu specifically told Ningshida when he was leaving, you will be mankind's teacher. Before the flood of Noah, yeah. uh, the Methuselah days, uh -huh. man lived a lot longer than now. And is it because they were hybrids of, of Anunnaki? Well, I believe that's the case. They originally started out with a pure bloodline. If you go back to the time when the bloodline started getting I don't know, when they became demigods, okay, that's when the blood started getting mixed. Well, that started happening when the Anunnaki stopped um, ruling everything themselves and started handing over the reins of control to the humans. And by the way, they, they started, so as they started mixing blood, yeah, they, you know, like Gilgamesh, uh, his mother was pure and his father was a human, so he yeah. knew he had a limited life and he tried to do something about it. That's why he wrote that the Gilgamesh. Yeah, giants in the earth in those uh, days. Uh, and and were, they, uh, were they as mean as the Bible tries to make them out to be, the giants on the earth in I, those days? I think what you're seeing in man's inhumanity to man here on this planet is, is no what, different than what they did what in the past, and it's about. probably just as brutal. And there's something I want you to explain people in here. Uh, in the Bible, I know you've said there's a lot of truths in there, but also untruths, like uh, the reason you made a great point, uh, people don't realize, the reason we started wearing clothes it wasn't because people were ashamed of, of their sexuality. It was because it was a status thing. They saw their owners wearing clothes and slaves not wearing clothes. It wasn't that they were ashamed of their nudity or that and sex became, was they bad. Became sentient beings. So in that Garden of Eden account in the city of Eridu, yeah. where Enel was watching to see if the uh, upgraded beings, I think she did a genetically upgraded procreate, could have babies. Enki was there. So they were the two in the Garden of Eden having this conversation with the with the primitive workers, okay? This is what I would... Enlil, Enlil tells them, he, you know, he writes himself as God. Enlil tells him, you eat anything in Enki's medicinal garden, guess what? You're going to die. Why? He lied. Yeah, okay, so Enlil says, no, nah, no, no, if you eat this, you might wake up and know the knowledge and they of did. people like we do. Well, guess what? They, they ate the, whatever they did, and they had a free will choice to not eat it and stay stupid. <laughs> wake up, and they chose to wake up, and then they took their punishment and got thrown out of the garden. So why, <clears throat> in the Bible, and, they tried to make it out, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah and, and sex being bad, and, and sex was not considered bad or a sin. Will you explain to them saying, But you need to understand there was there. a lie at every level, okay? Yes. In Sodom and Gomorrah, Enlil's uh, nephew, Lot, was taken captive there. He yes. sent his generals to go get him out, and they had a conversation, remember, with him? Well, what if I find... One righteous person here, will you, or, or ten of them, will you, will you destroy the city? No, no, no. What about one? And he finally gets down to, he's talking about his nephew, Lot. So he goes to get Lot out there, and his, and his wife was it Sarah. And they, they, they head out of town. Next thing you know, they nuke it. And the, the story of Sarah not looking back, or she turned into a pillar of salt. Well, any nuclear assault, you're told to look away. Or <laughs> you to wipe look you away. Out, you know? So, you know, and so Sodom and Gomorrah nuked by Enlil. This was Enki's territory, by the way. Right. Before Enlil took it out. So he, Enlil, Enki was there first. But he and, could, before, and then 5,000 years later, Enlil came. Well, the Mesopotamian population belonged to Enki first. So all his people had to get wiped out so Enlil could occupy it. 
and and the but the whole thing what I want you know we we've gotten a society where we are going back to the 1950s as far as the way people are thinking about sex and sexuality and I would really like people to start waking up to to this sexuality thing being bad and being a sin it wasn't a sin it wasn't the only reason Enlil in the Bible uh, didn't want us having sex and so we weren't procreating at the rate we were procreating it's not that having sex was bad or nudity was bad it was just considered a to be nude a walk around nude you'd be considered a slave sex wasn't bad sex was not a sin and Lil wanted you to think it was bad so you'd stop having it and stop having fucking kids it's not that well there was more, there was more to it than that too well, tell us. stole some of the um, I don't know they had tablets that described how to roll out civilization to various planets when they where they went and Enki was in control of them and uh, through one of the accounts, the Sumerian accounts, um, Inanna, Anu's favorite granddaughter, decided she wanted her own region to roll out civilization. She, she went down to Enki's domain after, got him drunk, stole some of the tablets, and went to the Indus Valley and set up her own civilization. Okay, and there they were teaching Tantra. Okay, ah, things that tantra. would change, yoga, all those kind of things that woke up your energy by. Enel didn't want any of that. So mm. she was really out of bounds by doing that. <laughs> but at the same time, look, it's really benefited mankind you know, in the long run. Yeah, it steams into it, the whole tantric sex thing. Um, what was the other thing? Well, well, I mean, from that standpoint, it's not that it's about having sex. No, no, it's create. about... It was about reaching higher energy it was about, well, and the consciousness that they did not want. That, they, had, they had Babylonian... Well, kundalini. Just say kundalini. Yeah, 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 essentially. Kundalini. Have a kundalini experience a possible ascension. You know, sex, because it raises your energy levels. It's like uh, when you have sex, your all of your endorphins and everything else are firing off. So just imagine that on a, a more intense level. And it's supposed to be enjoyable. Anyway, I didn't want to venture off. Into, I just, I get a lot of judgmental people in here uh, when it concerns sex. And, and they're on this side of all places, and they're going to act like, like church people and and they don't even understand the, the concept of why it was ever considered bad in the first place. Okay, but moving on from that, um, the back to the players and the government um, and what's happening, the, the shadow government, the other aliens, Anunnaki and other aliens, um, are they working together with these other aliens? Uh, I know, I mean, not only do we have this, this McCoy, Hatfield-McCoy family feud over our souls with the Anunnaki, I mean, where did they... It, do you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, these different races of aliens who ranks where? And and uh, a good, it's, a, it's a really good question. A lot of people are venturing off in the, the grays and this and the reptiles and the, yeah, and the Nordics yeah. and all. Yeah. But, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still stuck on the Anunnaki because they're the ones <laughs> that did what they did to us. So they're, they, you know, they're the you know, ones. I, they're, they're there's a genetic favorite. war going on this planet, and they created enough primitive workers to occupy it such that when other visitors came, they said, hey, take a hike. This is our planet. So there's genetic wars. So there's probably wars between them, yeah. galactic wars between them, over and dominance of resources. The, things that, you know, just the, extrapolate beyond the, the microcosm of the macrocosm. And what was it? The, Star Wars is reality. The 1500s, Germany, or Belgium, not Germany, Belgium, 1500s, they, uh, there were reports that people were watching a, a war in the sky. Uh, do you rem do you know of that? Do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. This is, listen, all through history there have been wars in the sky. In the Mahabharata, they, they were fighting each other with, with shooting missiles at each other. Okay, this goes mm -hmm. way back. There were there are cities in India that have been nuked, and there's still dead bodies laying in the street with radiation on them. Like carnivores wouldn't even go near them. Right. With, with blast areas where the sand has been turned into glass. This is not new behavior. Uh, Ninurta himself went to a cave brought out a nuclear weapon and nuked the spaceport on Sabar. Well, That's what caused them all to leave Mesopotamia in the first place. The question I get in here a lot is, if there are aliens and UFOs, because some people that come to my channel don't believe in them at all, they're like, why doesn't anybody ever get a good video of them? But I'm thinking, even with our technology being what it is today on Earth, and we're not nearly as advanced as we are, we're millions of years behind them, we have cloaking technology, you know they have cloaking technology. I'm under the impression we're not going to see them unless they want us to see them. 
that's funny you bring that up. You know, I was doing a show on Coast to Coast with John B. Wells, and he started talking about Smart Skin and DARPA, and they cut mm. our channel. Did you know that? Did they? <laughs> they did. They, they don't did. want they don't, people. They don't want people knowing that we have the technology. No. You can't see. Listen, that's a huge military advantage. So. Well, it's like the woman uh, that worked for Werner von Braun. I forget her name, and and she told everyone uh, it was like the 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 tarot cards of, of what all was going to happen. And she goes, remember, and the last thing is aliens. They're going to stage an alien thing. And and I think that they want people to think that, uh, yeah, UFOs, unless you see them, they don't exist. And that way well, they can surprise well, what do you think about What do you think about what the Catholic Church is doing to prepare their people for these alien brothers? Have you been listening to yes. the kind of coaching that's been going on the last couple of years? And people Listen. think it's 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 not. I've played it in here. They call me a conspiracy nut, but I'm. I tell them, do you not realize the Vatican owns the sun satellites? Why do you think the Vatican owns our sun satellites? And I don't. Well, they care. also own the United States. Do you realize in 1913 we haven't had a real currency? These these notes that they've been lending us from this Jesuit order. The UN bought all of our national States. parks. Yeah, well, that's the UN. They're about, to get, they're about to give them away to the Chinese to pay off their debt. Yeah, they bought all our national parks. The Vatican owns the Sun satellites. They own us. I always tell people uh, the money is, uh, or finances is the UK, uh, uh, the Vatican, that's, that's the law, and the United States, we're the military. Uh, and, and what kills me is people think, you know, we're at war or we're having conflict with Russia and China and all these countries, but they're not paying attention. If we're having conflict with these countries, why have we made agreements to swap our soldiers? Why are there soldiers here, their soldiers, on American soil being trained right now with us if we're in conflict with them? Because we're not really in conflict with them. It's like that missing Malaysian no, thing. No, it's, it's all just for show. It is all just for show. It is all is just they're, for show. they're setting up a new world order. They're Every all in it together. sovereignty is being pulled out from under it. You're being grouped into various you know, regions, and they'll be... Roman dictates over the top of it, just like there was And this before. is not so, a conspiracy. I wish people no, would stop it's really out. happening. Listen, there are illegal border checkpoints all through the United States. Ever since NAFTA, this, this concept of an Amero, where they were going to mix yes. America with Mexico and, and Canada, Canada, that's yes. really happening. Yes. And uh, I think ultimately you'll see a one-world currency very shortly, and I hope hopefully Bitcoin whips well, it out. And China, everyone's like, China owns us. Look, people, China's not doing much better than we are. Their market sucks at the moment. Everyone's market sucks at the moment, but I will. But I think uh, Gerald and I would agree on this. All these world leaders, they want to remain world leaders. If we all get, you know, uh, put out, grouped off together, bundled up together, they want to remain in their positions of power, and they know the only way they're going to keep those positions of power is if they play ball together. And we're not fighting them. They're not that's, fighting that's us. That's right. That's right. They know exactly about this alien agenda, and they're playing along to make sure they're in a position to benefit. And wars make money. Wars, well, that's one thing that, that we can learn from history is wars make money. And if there's a third world war, it is to, to try to boost something back into the economy because when they change over, they're going to need people that, enough people that are stable enough to get their new one jump started. And the only way they're going to do that is if there is a third world war. But they are not fighting each other. They're all pals with each other. Well, here's, it's interesting. We know the council change is going to happen, so an inky eye is going to end up in play. So, oh, and in, in the process between now and that happens, expect one of the inky eye forces to come out of the dark, out of nowhere, and completely pull the rug out of this new world order of shenanigans. Oh, Wait that would see. be so I awesome. guarantee you, watch and see if I'm not right. Because, you it's know, already happening. It's I don't, already happening. you know, I'm actually kind of pro uh, a, a united one world where there is one currency and there's no poverty and everyone has uh, equal opportunities. I'm pro that, but I'm not pro a fascist version of that. And I'm not a pro version of where, uh, where we're expendable. Humans are expendable. We've moved along to the degree they don't need us to operate their, their businesses. They don't even need us sitting at, a, at, at computers anymore. They can write programs to do what human beings have been doing, but they oh, want to sure. yeah. create this, uh, it's almost like a robotic version of us. You know, they found that they could make, a, that's why they say if you want to invest in something, in, advance, uh, invest in robotics, because they can, they're trying to figure out how to put a brain 
into a robot. That way it's stronger and smarter and you can't kill it. But if you create something like that, what happens to us? And that, that's what's scary um, because uh, I don't want to – could you imagine your brain in a robot? You wouldn't enjoy sex. You wouldn't enjoy the simple things we enjoy anymore. And I don't think it's meant to be that way. Do you want to talk about uh, the way out of this uh, calamity real quick, too? Yes. Kind of focus on the yes, fact yes. that they've got us under their thumb. I wanted to ask you about the Majestic 12, too, though, and Robert Bigelow. And who do you think saw the Majestic 12 besides Robert Bigelow and a Bush? You know, a Bush is on there. Mm -hmm. But, well, yeah, it's both. you know, I think that organization essentially led to Agenda 21, mm. if you know what I mean. So, Majestic 12? Well, not, not directly. Did it vicariously. Mm. So I, I was hoping we could. We no, could yeah. Talk. We go into it. I was you hoping want. we could talk about. I, I, I don't want to get down on, on a, on a no, down go, note. And, go and I wanted to want. talk a little bit about the way out. Yeah. Um, is that okay? Yeah. Whatever you want. I'm just here to, to yeah, learn. Yeah. So here's what here's what I know. Ningxiu Thaw was running mystery schools along, along the Egypt to wake people up. That was just like Anu told him to. Okay. So he was taking people to higher levels of consciousness. Nishida. And Enlil, yeah, Nishida, Nishida is Jesus. Son he was Enki's son, yeah. yeah. So now, go up into the Levantine, where Enlil had taken over the Lord of the Command, you know, everywhere in Israel and Iraq and Syria. That was all his region now. Mm -hmm. And imagine that Ningshida decided he was going to go pull a little Trojan horse trick, the dying, rising God ritual, up in the Levantine, so that his frequency could be dispensed to the chakras of all the primitive workers that wanted to find a way out of enslavement, because listen, Enlil was severe as a taskmaster. Yes. And there's no, there's, it's not a surprise to me. And he was the, the favorite. People, the Jewish people are God-fearing, and they were mortified of Enlil. He was a, this guy would wipe out Jerusalem for something that somebody did generations ago just because he felt like it. Look what he I did mean, to the Egyptians. Truly, really, truly, really, those people have been tortured under his, yeah. under his rule. He hardened really the heart of the Pharaoh. He, he said, I'm going to harden the heart of Pharaoh, because he could. The Pharaoh said he was going to let them go. And what does he say? I'm going to harden the heart, because I can. I mean, well, who that, does that? that story was a lie, too. We can go into that if you want. No, yeah. no let's go where you want. You're yeah, driving. Okay. But anyway, let's talk about the way out. So, <laughs> so as he was doing this dying, rising God ritual, essentially, Ningxia would have the ability to dispense a frequency that correlated to your chakras, and he could take you up to that quantized consciousness level all in mass, like a broadcast. Mm. Well, what are you going to do about that if you're trying to keep people from being suppressed and you're, you're messing with the electric magnetic spectrum of their body? It's hard to stop. Yeah. Right? It's impossible to stop. Yes. So this was the, this was the real, um, I don't know, I guess this was the real counter-revolution that Ningxia did to overcome this primitive worker beatdown that Enlil made sure we were still subject to. Mm. So... How did, so what's so what am I saying? The bottom line is, you mentioned there were, appeared to be two different gods in the Bible. Well, the Old Testament had this God of wrath and vengeance and he was real jealous and all this, right? Mm. Well, all of a sudden you go, the New Testament is not that way. He's well, the New love. Testament was the account of Jesus, right? It was Nishida. Mm. So they were not the same being, and they, any in, any person can see that they weren't the same being. So in that account, he said in John one twelve that if you took on this frequency he was dispensing in the dying rising God ritual, and you believed that you know, he was who he said he was, that you could be transformed into one of them if you wanted to do that. Well, now go back to the Garden of Eden. You're, you're given this choice. Do you want, you, if you don't eat it, or if you eat it, you're going to die. If you do, you're going to wake up and become like us. So you're given a free will choice to choose your own elevation of consciousness. That game started in the Garden of Eden and has not stopped. What do you, you think? Have a you have a choice to break out of this if you want to. What do you think but about, well, like Jesus, some people... I think that uh, Jesus spent time uh, in with Buddhist. They believe he had Buddhist okay. well, teaching. He, well, maybe or is he it was the, Buddhist because he had multiple incarnations. Or is it the other way around? Was Jesus teaching Buddha his teaching? <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, maybe he was Buddha. Maybe he was, yeah, maybe he was yeah, Buddha. Rick Casey believes he was Buddha. Who, who, oh, does he? That, he, does. he? He published a document, which I put on my website. Yep. Uh, his Airy Institute. Well, the last 40 years. And what do you think? Did Jesus get, did, what's the story about Mary Magdalene and him uh, having a thing with that? Do you believe that? I believe Mary Magdalene was the uh, Nin Hartzog. So you do believe Jesus and, and, and Mary Magdalene? Do you think and, they, and she did an Nin Hartzog. Well, Nart -talk. this is, this is where I'm, 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 I throw up a question mark because it's believed 
And in France, there were these documents that wound up getting stolen by this, this priest in France that, that supposedly documented that Mary Magdalene got away, had a baby, which was uh, Jesus' baby. Right. Well, this was, the, this was the, the story from Dan Brown, you know, landing, <laughs> landing it over in the UK, and she uh, was pregnant with him. But this is where the monarchy <laughs> thinks that, this is what I've heard, they believe that through Diana, William has that bloodline. And this is why some believe he is the Antichrist. And this is what I'm, I'm curious. Is is he the Antichrist of a good guy or a bad guy? And well, I think the British and the Americans doing what they're doing, I think they're the largest terrorists on this planet right mm. now. They didn't used to be. This the, the United States used to be the center of moral behavior across the world. It's not anymore. It's the, just the opposite. Just the, the opposite. Queen is worth I'm telling you, sixty something is, trillion dollars. She could yeah. she could bail out the entire world of debt yeah. and money left over. Exactly. That's obscene. Exactly. So I think um, I think there's always infiltration. But is William an infiltration? They're going back and forth. Listen, the Masons in in Europe was an organization that was designed for intellectuals to talk about inky eye type things, and, and not have the inner-like Catholic Church beat them down. Well, well they William, got infiltrated by the Illuminati well, in 1776, and, they, and that's, so it goes back and forth, back and well, forth. Well, the thing with William is that pregnancy with his wife, that was not real. That baby they introduced, that was a month-old baby. That was not a day-old baby. So well, you know about that, right? That is, you know, and there's this really great website. I'm going to type it right here so you can bookmark it. It's called grailcode.net, and it gives... Oh, okay. Have you heard yeah, well, of Well, actually, the, the Genesis of the Grail Kings, written by Lawrence Gardner, he, he was all about this, and he spoke a lot about uh, well, their blood loss. Well, I and want you actually, to check out the grailcode.net. Okay, well, and, check it out. And sure. what he does is he goes he goes back through the monarchy and the bloodlines, and, and, and they claim that... Through Diana, William has that Davidic bloodline. But what I want to know is if you think he is, is, is William, is his child that he just, the fake baby, is that a, a, an infiltration on Inky's part by chance? Could he be, wind up no, being a good I guy or I, is it a bad guy? Um, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think what we're looking at from the British monarchy right now is, the, listen, their symbol, they, they've got a symbol on their crest. It gives it away. They're affiliated with Ninurta. Yes. The double eagle is Ninurta. It landed in the United States, too. It didn't used to be here. It also landed in Russia. They used to have a, a flag that had the sickle and the hammer. It's not anymore. It's got a double eagle on it. So you don't I'm think William might try to get back, though, because knowing that they probably killed his mom? I think, I think the Enolites are going to come out and pull the rug out from under them. I'm telling you. And on my Facebook page, Maserati released a commercial with their new car during the Super Bowl last year, Oops. right? And in that commercial, there's a triton on the front of the car, and this small child is talking about plotting and scheming in, the, in secret. And when it's time, you come out and you strike. Well, there's Listen, a that's rumor. That's what the Yankeeites are going to do. Wait well, and see. Well, there's a rumor that, that uh, and I don't know where I heard it, but, you know, a lot of people think William's Antichrist, but... He has to know they had his mother killed. So you have to wonder, just like we were talking about Saddam may have very well have been uh, contacted, what if William was? And what if uh, what if they use him? What if the Inkyites use him to uh, infiltrate? Well, that's very possible. I'll, I'll tell you a little secret about what happened in 1963 in the Vatican. Albert Pike killed a black man oh. in South Carolina, oh. and he imposed the smoke of Satan into the Vatican. Why did he do that? Because he knew what was going on there, and he was going to destroy it because it was it was an Inalite organization, and the Masons were an Inkyite organization. So he caught he was contacted. So I want to know though. You said the pentagram is uh, an ISIS thing, but it's associated with Luciferianism. So is uh, now that's, well, who came up with that? Who demonized the dragon in the pentagram in the Middle Ages? It was the Catholic Church. Those were Inky symbols. So the pentagram the is used for quote-unquote, black magic. So the pentagram's actually not a, a, no, a bad... He demonized. His symbols were demonized and perverted. Well, the he, great destroyer made himself God and perverted the true creator. But Just you know... Extend you, that theme through everything. I will. Group. But no. you see Hollywood, what they've, they've done with Hollywood. They've turned everything Luciferianism, and you've got all of these... uh you about all the Illuminati symbols. Right, and they use that's the pentagram... Not, I don't think that's Luciferian. I think that's Illuminati. And when you talk about Illuminati, you're talking about Lights. Yeah, and that's but so but they use in their music and in their their symbols in their music they use pentagrams and baphomets and well why do you think where do you 
you think that, that negative influence came from for them to smear the creator with like that? So they're Enel. It's coming from Enel. So they're, they're, it's kind of like reverse psychology. They're exactly, using this. Exactly. Exactly. It's the greatest deception ever. Right. Greatest deception ever. I've got you. So do you, okay, again, back to, you said to bring us out of this. So you think it's good to, obviously, to, to meditate and raise your energies and clean your pineal gland. They used, um, you know, mono, they used to ingest monoatomic gold, and in the Bible they talked about some kind of bread they made with this. Yeah, yeah, this gold. is a great story, the, and this is where my wife's uh, website, uh, artisticvegan.com, comes in. She, uh, through this process of exposure to everything I was into, realized that, you know, you can pay attention to how you feel when you eat certain foods. Yes. And you keep paying attention, pay attention to how you do certain activities that make you feel better or worse. We'll keep doing the things that make you feel better, and eventually... You'll lead, you'll lead you to the right diet for you, whether it's, you know, a blood type diet or whatever. Well, in that process also, after reading about Hathor's temple on Mount Sarabit el Kadim, which is Mount Sinai, and Moses going up there and having an encounter with the Anunnaki in, in, in Exodus 32.20, he comes down off the mountain and he says, oh, you guys are all worshipping this idol calf. Well, what does he do? He burned the calf, turned it into a powder, put it in water, and told the Israelites to drink it. That's bizarre. That's yeah. bizarre. First of all, when you melt gold, it doesn't turn into a powder. So they had some alchemical knowledge on how to do that. And that has to do with adding stibium or antimony to the gold while you're going through various uh, smelting temperatures that causes it to turn into a powder. Well, this monoatomic element has huge impacts on your electrical energy body, and they knew that. And it, they were Ten trying years. To, they right? were, yeah. Well, it ultimately leads to activation of the pineal gland, which is your seventh chakra on the top of your head. So do you think it's, releasing, it's okay to ingest it? Releasing dimethyltryptamine, okay? So all of a sudden there's the blissful state that the yogis get after 20 years, right? But there's another side effect in that in that process of this monotonic element. It's almost like, um, uh, I can't, I can't, there's certain tissue that can be turned into any of the tissue. Well, monotonic gold has an effect on your telomeres and yes. your DNA. So because the DNA is very much an energetic structure that holds energy and light. It, no, it, nobody talked about it's that. like anti-aging. Yeah, so they, these, these ends of your uh, DNA, these telomere caps, during the cell replication process, if they don't shorten, you don't age. And they figured that out. Have so you tried them. ingesting it? Well, we've been taking it for about two years. My wife is an alchemist, and she makes it. We distribute it. Really? So she, I'll, does I'll she sell it on her site? Yeah, I'll give you a website. Uh, she's sitting here right now. How do you it. ingest it? Ask her how well, to ingest it. Well, there's various ways. Uh, she, she makes it into uh, a colloidal solution in liquid, and we usually have an eyedropper and put four to six drops in our coffee in the morning, or you can put it sublingually under your tongue. Some people, now, in Mount, at Mount I've been Sinai, wanting to try it, but I... Yeah, 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 you should try it. I, I, well, I've looked on Amazon and, and people, uh, different reviews for different kinds, but I'd rather, but I would rather get her, someone that... Yeah, that listen, I, I, I actually, I got drawn into this. I had no idea we were going to get drawn into talking about Starbucks. No, but this is because great. Of, because I mentioned it in my book, and the Anunnaki were doing it to mitigate their aging, it, it came up as a big deal. And so, uh, well, I knew I I'd only get this one chance, so I'm trying to milk you for <laughs> all I can. Well, I got I got David Hudson's patent and started reading it, and I you know I'm an engineer, so I, you know it's 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 not difficult for me to understand it. And I went through this, and I thought, wow, okay, this looks real. It looks like exactly what you know what what they were after. Mm -hmm. And so uh, after reading his patent, I started talking to alchemists and reviewing them seeing what they were into, what they thought worked, what didn't. Uh, and, you know, the, the transition metals, all six of them, whether it's silver or gold or the platinum group in there, uh, any of those can be used to create this monoatomic element. Can you and tell? So, has it made a difference? Is it, is it in your skin or your, the way you feel? Yeah, it, uh, now I, have, I know a couple of people who have been taking it for about 11 years, and mm -hmm. they um, said their hair had turned from gray. These guys were in their 80s, by the way. Oh. But their hair had turned back. And they're still and alive now. Here. Yeah. Um, they're just full of energy and vitality, um, mental faculties completely present. You know, just, and I know some of them are still running. Could it fight cancer? They're doing lectures. They're really amazing people. Because so. we, 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 we came to an interesting conclusion in my channel not long ago how uh, it's funny how none of the monarchs or any living American president has ever been stricken with cancer. <laughs> well, Is yeah, that they, a weird coincidence? They, I'm sure they get exposed to all kinds of stuff. But, um, yeah, I'll, but I'll they're... Their website, but, uh, it's really, it's really a, a neat process, and I have to tell you, I had an encounter with a guy who was the head of the Western Mining Alliance up in uh, Truckee, California, and he uh, had his own 160-acre gold claim up in the, the 
near Nevada City, you know, where Gullers Gulch and the big nuggets have been found and all that. And mm -hmm. uh, he told me some very interesting things. He invited me up there. I went up there and we went panning down in his, uh, mining down in his, on his plot. And you have to realize that people are in the mining industry run into all kinds of scenarios where, for instance, suppose you had a limestone cave and you had monoatomic elements that were leaching out of the water and certain acids together. Well, monoatomics occur naturally in nature. You know, it only takes a certain kind of acid to etch away gold to cause it go into a colloidal solution. Hydrochloric and sulfuric acid will do it. And and I th that's and there's a reason as I keep telling people in here. Why do you think we value gold so much? Because Anunnaki no, came it's, here. It can, it can it can prolong your life indefinitely if you know how to use it, and they did. So, um, so we started using it. Um, I would tell you that you will find in your energy body, if you're paying attention to that, working with your chakras, you know, trying to align yourself with gravity, that is the most important of all, by the way. And pine, what do you recommend for clean, uh, cleaning your pineal gland? Because I, uh, I was taking two different things, and I can't think at the moment, to, to try to clean one. And I'm wondering what you suggest for clearing your pineal gland. Well, you know, actually, we talked about this a little bit. First of all, not, not using fluoridated water. Mm -hmm. That's a really bad thing. We um, have a, a water softener. It causes around your pineal gland. That's why they've been putting it in the water, to keep you asleep. Okay, so the pineal gland is very important as being the seventh chakra. And there's lots of ways to go down uh, about doing that. A lot of it has to do with your diet and uh, the cleansing diet and okay. various anti-shellating things. I'm not tuning in my wife more about that. I'll give you her website. Um, also, I'm going to put up a, a link on structural integration for people. In, in, my, in my book on Chapter 5, I talk about integrating yourself with a gravity field. In my opinion, that is the best way to, to clear your chakras and wake up. You can do all, this, all these other things, but real okay, physical sorry, change um, in your body. Real is, physical change in your body. Uh, this is what I was gravity. taking. Oh, okay. Chlorella and spirulina. Oh, well, now... It's funny you bring that up. So we, we discovered spirulina and chlorella algae some time ago, and we, we take it as well. Yeah. And the, the thing about um, it helps you go to the bathroom. in particular is it has the ability to attach to heavy metals and rid them from your body. So mm -hmm. not all heavy metals need to be rid from your body. I mean, there are certain minerals and stuff you need in your body. So whenever you take spirulina, make sure you're taking a supplement, too. A supplement like, oh, like an well, like everyday yes, vitamin. Yeah, vitamin kind of right, like an everyday vitamin, right. If it does, it, I mean, it, it rids your body of a lot of things, but it's very, very helpful. And so, so in taking these and cleaning out your pineal gland, you suggest listening, I, I'm going to guess, to different waves. They have videos on YouTube where you can listen to certain things yeah, while you yeah. meditate. Well, there's, you know, anything you can do to change your energy body is great. You can, and you can do things that are temporary. You can change your your consciousness with breathing exercises. You can do like it all. Like they do in yoga? Like the yes, five. I'll tell you rapid breathing? Well, yoga, imagine you could have yoga results where somebody's been doing that for 20 years and you could have that in a short period of time in your life. Maybe a couple, three, five months. So that's why I recommend structural integration. It's like doing 20 years of yoga, especially for people whose fascia is um, more amenable to it. So you're, you're, you're plastic and you can be changed to align the gravity field. That, in and of itself, is the most significant thing you'll ever do. Oh, you'll right, in your book, you had the, uh, the posture right. in the book. Yeah. I, well, I you, can't, you can't force. This is not something you force. You can't stand up straight and make this happen, okay? This is a change in your connective tissue that allows your body to align in the gravity field. So how do you suggest is, doing it? I saw it in your book it, where you had, it showed a diagram of the way people stand. How do you correct it? You say you can't correct I'm it. I'm actually typing a link in right now. Um, and I discovered this because of my kid who had this genetic disorder. Okay, He had uh, a disease such that his connective tissue was drooping all over his body. And he was in braces and he couldn't walk because mm -hmm. of this. So um, I discovered something called structural integration that changes that. Your body is plastic. Imagine you could soften the connective tissue to the point where gravity can find its way from the top of your head down to the center of your bowl, your pelvis, like it's supposed to. Well, that wakes up a human in accordance with that equation I put in my chapter 5. Chapter five. Equation, equation 5A shows you that you are a function of the gravity field, wavelength, and Here. frequency in each of your chakras. That shows that this is what he's talking about, guys. Yeah. So, uh, you, yeah, that's the posture chart that shows the alignment through your body. Well, if you can get 
gravity to go through your body like that, guess what? Your chakras will light up like a, like a firecracker. What about, you know, um, they have different ley lines. There are different, there's stronger energy. It's why certain monuments are placed where they are across the globe is because they're on certain ley lines. And, you know, we've had presidents that were really into placing things on certain ley lines because of the energy that is produced. And it's kind of like a, the Bermuda Triangle. And all along that, that same area across the map, you've got strange things going on. Um, what about people living near those areas? Because I know I've got some people in here that, that live around New Mexico and they live near those uh, areas. No, I think that's a real I think that's a real effect. You know, you consider our brain when it runs from about zero to twenty hertz. So any frequency generated by the earth that can fall within that region is gonna have a big effect on you. So we know there's a human resonance that happens because of the geometry of our planet at about seven point eight hertz. Well, various layers in the earth, because of the composition of the earth, whether it's met metallic or whatever, causes various frequencies to occur. The Mayans referred to these as the nine underworld frequencies. Well, they all fall in the, the human brainwave segment. So if you're getting those those frequencies interacting with you, your electrical body, uh, it can take you to a, a Is there a way place. to measure your frequencies? Absolutely. How? So I, I actually, in my practice, I ran a structural integration practice for about almost 10 years. Mm. And ultimately, I thought, started noticing a direct correlation between people's structure, whether it's, uh, you know, their up and down structure from the top of the body to the bottom or left and right, you know, this planar symmetry. Mm. That if you didn't have that or there were problems with that, it affected your energy. And it was showing up on this meter that, that I bought. And I bought two of them. One's called a resonant field imaging that measures the frequency. You take that frequency, put it into a piece of software, it converts it into a wavelength, which is color, and then you look at it. Where so do you, your do chakras are color. Do you place it on you? or? or? Well, it's a handheld meter that you hold with it. Oh, you hold it and yeah. it can read yeah, it's, just it's by holding it. Yeah, it's kind of painful. It. I, You've got to take a lot of measurements for it to work. And, it, and the, the software is designed you can measure all over the body. It's not just the chakras. Mm. Anyway, so I did that for a while. and kind of got tired of taking measurements. And I finally discovered uh, that you could do this with a video camera without having to take any measurements. So just see it real time. You should and do that is, with people that are dying. Get their permission. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I actually, I bought this software. And I used it in my practice for a while. And it's called Polychromatic Interference Photography. People have probably heard of Purely in Photography. Yes, Purely in uh, Photography. That's why I well, said. That's when, that's when basically you spectrum light, shines it on the client, you control all the light in the room, and then you look at the uh, interaction of photons with the electromagnetic field as it perturbates through the body, and you can see the colors of the chakras, You can start a school doing this. Do you know that? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this software is very expensive, and a lot, of, a lot of people are not as into it as you might think. I thought people would really want to see their energy body. Not, listen, it scared people. I think they <laughs> so, will. So, as... But I think when people start realizing that you are responsible for your energy, and that's I, your job to optimize it in this order of reality. That's it. Well, you Figure live, that out. Figure you live that in out. an ideal place, Gerald. You're out in the West Coast where they're a lot more liberal to these things. And any major city, I think, would a uh, school like this would go over really well, especially as we're moving into this new age, this age of Aquarius. I think people are getting more into the metaphysical. And think about it. What's, uh, I don't know. Have you seen that show, Dark Matter? Uh, and uh, the king, one of the kings from Lord of the Rings, he's the narrator. But they did the, the episode about the man who, I forget his name, who did the studies, you know, 100 years ago, where he went to a tuberculosis clinic and he was measuring the weight of someone from the time they passed on to see if they had a soul. But with what you're doing, if you were to pick up on his work and, you know, maybe go to cancer clinics, I know it's morbid, but just say, hey, we're doing experiments to think, if you could actually photograph uh, a person well, this, from the moment this, they pass on. And yeah, yeah, that would be fun, huh? <laughs> I think well, it would be awesome. That also, could be your next book. This is what people want. They want tangible proof of yeah, yeah. souls and that, that really? they live on. Really? Well, this has been out for a long time. Listen, I VIP has so. been out for 10 years. So has RFI and all these other imaging, advanced imaging technologies we have in Western medicine. <laughs> we use them for analysis, but... Uh, Are you going to write another book, John? Yeah, I, I actually wrote a movie script, and I was trying to get that out, uh, to get the story out, and I've been playing with people for a while, but yeah, probably the most pragmatic thing I could do is write another book, and I've already started, the whole outline's done, I just need to start filling it in. So. Did you expect this book to get as, as popular as it did, to sell as well as it did? No, actually, I waited nine years, I should have released it nine years earlier, and I'd have probably done a lot better. I figured that the market mm -hmm. was flooded with Anunnaki and 
months, and I figured I'd miss the boat. Actually. This is perfect time. So, People are just waking up to this stuff, Gerald. I think uh, you're, really, because I feel like okay. well, when I was writing it in 2000 and 2003, when I first started this, you know, the ancient aliens on the History Channel hadn't come out yet, yeah. so there wasn't there wasn't anybody that I was talking to about this. There are tons of alien shows out now. I mean, even pop culture, uh, goofy fictional shows. There, I mean, uh -huh. and then they've got Hangar One that just came out. I just, I just and, saw Hangar One the other day. It's really good. There, the only thing about Hangar One is they reference MUFON a lot, and MUFON, as you as you may or may not know, is owned by Robert Bigelow, Robert uh -huh. T. Bigelow. So I did, I did not know that. Yeah, Robert T. Bigelow now owns MUFON, and he has basically In every state. Yes. That he owns MUFON, oh, and so every you know all these files that they had that were open to everyone are now locked or sealed unless he's given his approval. It's like um, there's a good Jesse Ventura show. It's uh, watch the one about um, what's it called, guys? We we played it here the other day. It's about oh what's it's uh da -da, what's the area in Area 51, oh, you're talking about the no, Alaska. No, it's the, what well, Robert Bigelow, he bought the property, the cattle mutilations, what's it called? Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, uh -huh. Skinwalker Ranch. So watch the Jesse Ventura, type, go to YouTube, type okay, Jesse yeah. Ventura, Skinwalker Ranch, and that, basically the entire episode is about Robert Bigelow and MUFON. And, okay. and how much control he has now. He's the only person, entity, group, whatever, that is allowed to send weapons in space now. So, and, and being that Hangar 1 is referencing MUFON so much, I can't help but think, well, the information they're getting from MUFON is being Robert Bigelow approved, and I feel certain since now all UFO calls are now routed to Robert Bigelow, I mean, if you call the government, say, hey, I saw a UFO, they're going to send you to Robert Bigelow. And yeah, he, but you know what? He's a budget the reality, is, man. the reality is Canada is disclosed, Mexico is disclosed, you know, yeah, the major but, countries have disclosed, so here we are sitting here playing these stupid games. Yeah, and, but to uh, know that in the United States, if you see a UFO, they're going to tell you to call Robert Bigelow is kind of like, he owned budget hotel suites, and now he's the guy the guy to know when it comes to UFOs or aliens in the United States, so you know he's got a seat on the Majestic 12, which I want to ask you, who did, oh, you didn't want to delve into Majestic 12. Uh, um, so who, um, I know you want to probably wrap this up a bit because your wife's there with you, and what, um, so when you meditate and you take your monatomic gold, which by the way, I still would like a link to. Oh, um, yeah. Okay, I'm uh, to one up right now. What do you think, so they, the Anunnaki admittedly say there is a creator of all, we're basically worshiping Anunnaki. Um, if there's, this, I guess I'm going to go in two or three questions. If you could say anything to any skeptics in my channel right now that could change their mind that Anunnaki are not some myth or a fictitious story um, that could turn them into believers, what would you say? Um, of course, I'm biased. I would say go read my book or listen to my <laughs> audio book. <laughs> Um, I would say there's only one document you need to look at, and it has not been refuted. It's on display in a museum as a tablet, and uh, it's the Altrahasis, hands down. The Altrahasis, let's type the that. How do you if you spell read that, A-T-R-A-H-A-S-I-S, -A -A -S -S, you'll read that document, all those tablets. It's not, it won't take you that long. But in the very first tablet, you're going to realize who did what to whom, and you're going to be confronted with your own belief system. Because that document has never been refuted. It's pre-diluvial, and it was written by Enki's son to tell us the story of what happened to us. And, and, but, so who do you think, who was the author of the Autrasasis? Well, that's another name for Noah. He was the author. Enki's Noah. son autobiographically wrote that document for the primitive workers so they know what went down on this planet. It's very important to read that. And that is where again? Well, you can you can read it in my book. I put it in my book. The but it's also, yeah, I put it in the very front of my the very oh, first the preface. chapters in the book. The preface. I quoted down that multiple times because that document is so damn important. Yes. Every human on this planet ought to read that document. Well, let there me just is. show you your just book. Just read that one. 
Can you see all the earmarks? Can you see yeah, all of these earmarks? I was very disturbed when I found out what Handel did to us after 600 years of the primitive breeder working program, which, by the way, corroborates exactly in Genesis where Noah was the king of Shrewback after 600 years, right? I now, don't Now, read how... the other and see that, and you're going to go, oh, my God, I... I can't believe that went down. I just don't see how people can say Sitchin's wrong when everything Sitchin translates correlates identically well, this, to the this, Bible. Listen, they don't want people to know their true account because as soon as they do, all the control, all the corruption, and all the world's governments and all the religious organizations gets pulled out from under it. And you've got people that now know the truth and they're going to ask to be allowed to live the way they were designed to be, not as slaves. So we were, yeah, you believe in meditation and ascension. Do you pray? And if you pray... What entity do you pray to? The creator of all? Or do you I have a... Start with, I usually start with the creator of all, and then I definitely venerate those who put their genetic mark on us. Like Enki and Isis? Record. Like Enki and Nin Hartzog and Nin Shida. Those three in particular were here to help us. The, uh, the rest of them... What about Isis? They're a bunch of, they're a bunch of assholes, us? and I think they ought to... They, they were genocidal murders, and they ought to be brought to What about trial. Isis? Well, that was Nin Nin, Nin, Nin Sharhog, right. Nin Hartzog, yeah. Nin. She had a couple of names. You know, you understand these major players had multiple. Names. Yes. That's why I put that table in, uh, in there so you can see what their names are. Yes, and, and there's also a, a a group of people they they believe in aliens and stuff, and they they seem kind of nutty like the Heaven's Gate people, but I'm not saying they are. But they're a, a kind of a sect like that, and they pray to Jesus Adonai. They call him Jesus well, Adonai. Adonai was another name for Jesus. Yeah. So Jesus Adonai, what do you Adonai think? Adonai was another name for Jesus. Yeah. So had, remember I told you he had an AKA list, which was longer than most everyone else's because of the role he took on. But Enki had one too. It was EA, Enki, Nudamood, Poseidon, you know. So yeah, they, the that's the, AKA. if you want to worship something positive or, or thank someone positive, Jesus Adonai would be a good one. Yeah, well, yeah, well, listen, he, he, uh, he, he basically sacrificed himself so we could have a frequency so we could wake up at some point. Now, this is what I want to follow up with. Remember we talked about John one twelve. to all who receive that frequency he's given? It's not, that's not enough. Listen, it's not enough. You can receive your energy in your ganglion of empire in your sacrum. That's not enough. He what? also says to become, you have to do something. You have to transform yourself. What about the people that that do worship Jesus Adonai? There's this one guy. He's on YouTube, and he's on this uh, site before it's news, and, and his posts seem kind of nutty, and he's all about Jesus Adonai, but he talks to people that claim to be channeling all these entities, but they seem to be full of crap, and they make him look stupid, like the whole... A uh, Malaysian plane was taken by aliens. Like they, they, and it makes it makes the other well, material they talk about less credible. Well, that's the problem with, with channeling. I don't discount it, but at the point where you use that as your legitimacy for telling your story, sometimes it, 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 it takes away from it. So it, you know, it does. hopefully you got you get your channeling, but you got to do some corroborating with some physical things. So like we live what in about? Brain or in reality have you ever right seen now. Zeta talk? A lot of people talk about Zeta Talks. It's a, a website, zetatalk.net, I think, or zetatalk.org. But it's a woman who claims to have been channeling um, uh, oh, Arcturians, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, yeah, I have seen that. And oh. a lot of people reference it because a lot of the stuff that she supposedly channeled and talked about seems to come to pass, but some of it does not. And um, and I, I read someone else talking about it, and they brought up a really good point. They said, how come, you know, almost every website in the world has been hacked at some point, but the Zeta Talk website has never been down? How does that happen? Because you know it's been targeted by people who think she's a nutter. And it make, it, he broached the question that what if it's actually disinfo by, uh, by the government, this Zeta Talk website that people reference? And uh, I don't know. So I thought if you had heard no, of it. Stuff you know about. Cases, the Enuma Elish and the Epic Gilgamesh. No, they have I'm been not. Refuted and uh, listen, there's thousands and thousands of others, okay? And I've read a no. whole bunch of them, but, but to, ask, to ask other people to do the same, that, that's not no, real. So I've summarized into the three that I think are the most important. No, yours is my favorite. Out of all, I have tons, I, I have a, a stack of these books, and yours was the most reader friendly, except when you get into your. Your uh, electrical, my engineering junk, yeah. yeah, your engineering stuff goes over my head. But for men who are, are into that and they're into measurements, and they're gonna love that. 
but there's enough in here, even if you're not into the engineering stuff, that makes it so reader friendly and the way well, you piece I'm glad, it. I'm glad you got that because you know I read all Sitchin's books. It was ex it was exhausting. It is. It, it's, and it's wonderful, wonderful stuff. It is. But it's not for everybody to go to that level of detail. So <sighs> I, you know, and I think that was part of the reason so many people didn't learn about his stuff because it was so it was so onerous. To exhausting. Go yes. Uh, but but um, having to him to stand on his shoulders and be able to do what I did, I, I could not have presented that story the way I did had I not had all that information. Well, on your travels, like when you travel with your job. Do you talk to to some older people about their their legends and, and their civilizations and? Well, actually, that's a that's a good point. And what I've been doing recently is going all through the different parts of the world and getting symbols to show who's doing what and where. And it's most amazing what I've found. Michael Tellinger. <laughs> yeah. Do you love him? I love him. Well, he and I are kind of kindred spirits on, on a very similar mission. He, he got exposed to the Sumerian accounts that said they were mining gold in Africa, and he went to Africa and tried to make that his mission, to find the gold mines, and, and he found temples and all kinds of stuff. He's on Earth so, an, an enormous amount of what I would call tangible evidence for anybody who doesn't believe. It's like, how can you deny it? And as well as the, the Bosnian caves, I don't know if you've seen... Oh, well, I've been those. looking at the, the Bosnian pyramid recently. Yes. Oh, my goodness, that is Amazing. How can Absolutely it, amazing. That, they claim that it could be you know, anywhere from 10 to 20,000 years old, which pokes all sorts of holes into the evolution theory. And how can a scientist say that a material four times harder than any concrete we use today is found inside that, that engineered tunneling system is a natural structure? Yeah, yeah they, had, they, they still had technology that they were using metallurgy and with stones that we still can't do today. That's quite tangible. Different. How can people not well, say that? Well, let's go to Baalbek, Lebanon, okay? There's a thousand ton stone, three of them, in the third rung of the wall that we can't even lift with a crane today. How did they do that? Yes. Now, Planning, how do you think they so, made the Egyptian? I get asked a lot, how were the Egyptian pyramids made? And and people joke, they're like, Anne thinks dinosaurs did it. No, I don't. No, uh, actually, Ningshita did it. He declared so in the Emerald Tablets. Yeah. That's his face on the Sphinx, by the way. That's Which, you know, in the age of Leo, when he had it mandated, it was about 10,000 BC to 8,500 BC, and that region, the age of Leo, was when he had it made, and that's his face on there. He said so, oh. and all the accounts indicate that Thoth was the builder of the Sphinx and the pyramids. Now, what do you say to the skeptics that claim they wouldn't need runways for spacecrafts back then? You know, because like ancient aliens, they would, or would not. They claim they would not. You know? Oh well, they they actually seem to have both. They had they had wing discs, and they were also using rocket technology. And the reason we know that is because Gilgamesh wanted to go to Baalbek, Lebanon, in order to have an encounter with the, the Anunnaki because he wanted his eternal life thing. And they were talking about rockets taking off and landing there at that point, and he witnessed those. But like so they, they had both technologies. Like, they probably were using very heavy rocket technology for but, probably but, moving the ore to. The well, runways are for planes, though, right? Why would they What's need that? runways for, for rockets? If well, if you think of our space shuttle, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a craft that's designed to re-enter our orbit and go over a long pathway and glide, you know, and they probably have that kind of technology, too. And those things can carry huge amounts of cargo. And, and so. the truth is, just because it, it seems uh, unlikely or impossible or it doesn't make sense to us in, in, in our... And the way we do things today doesn't mean that it didn't make sense back then because you can't explain away the rest of it. Do you think they were in contact with each other, these, you know, like uh, Africa to oh, yeah. the Middle well, listen, East? By, uh, by the time Critias was mentioned by Plato in Greece around 330 BC, they had already divided the entire planet among themselves, according to them. And so their, you know, their, their, their offspring are everywhere. And they have been here for a very long time. And, you know, just to wrap that up, I think I'm about ready to wrap up. Yes, I know you are. I've kept you waiting. About 500 BCE. I've kept you. You stayed with me longer. You know, Gerald, I know I, know I got, got you tonight. You got me going. You, you baited me and got me going. I but, did. But about 500 BCE, they, uh, you know, they, uh, a lot of them decided because of the message from Galzu that they were aging on this planet. They didn't want that 
And they got a terrible, terrible message. And guess what? Those of you that have been here for a very long time, you cannot leave the earth. Don't come back to the or you'll die because of the adaptation your body has taken on to the gravity field. And so many of them stayed here, but the ones that had not been here a long time, around 500 BCE, there was a mass exodus. But Enki stayed, Inhart Sox stayed, Nanar Sin stayed, Enlil stayed, several of the main players that were the How are they able to live so long? I thought they were able to live longer due to the the orbit. Well, yeah, well, listen, the ones on the high-level council that were taking the elixirs of life, life, guess what? They, They don't die. And they made us where we didn't live as long because there were so many of us. Well, even if they did die, they have reincarnation abilities that we can't even fathom right now. And it was the in your book the guy who was looking, and I forget which one, he was uh, looking for the elixir of life. He kept looking for it, looking for it, looking for it. The king here. Oh, Gilgamesh. That was Gilgamesh. Yeah, Gil- yeah Gilgamesh. Yeah. Yeah. Gerald- so he ended, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, you know, he He's got the same issue that we do here today. We know we're, we're genetic hybrids. We got a short little life. And I think the reason uh, the longevity movement has taken on such uh, prevalence since 2009 is, uh, is the knowledge that the Anunnaki uh, were prolonging their lives with it. And that's why gold was the chosen as the currency basis. It's but because it's, it's so important to have. Well, you know, Paul Hellyer claims there are so many uh, different species of aliens. What do you think that the Anunnaki think of, of, of these other aliens? Must they I be think, allies? I think they think they're the big guys on the block, and uh, they're here to make sure this planet and its resources are accessible to them, and they probably have conflicts with other people coming here, messing with their primitive workers, I would guess. Yeah, because you, you've got some people claiming that, you know, they're Pleiadians, because, like, the different races, you know, how we're, we have right. Asian and black, and, and they say that, that's because different aliens came here and populated and and left their mark. And could it be that there is a kind of a fight over? Well, I think uh, a geneticist is the best person to answer that because if you <laughs> analyze our DNA and go, well, about this one, you know, but they've already looked at it. Actually, it's significant, significantly and realized that our chromosomes were messed with. There was some splicing going on, and uh, we were dumbed down. As their slaves. What the interesting thing about it is right now, as we go through this galactic center, the Mayan calendar predicted it because Thoth was Quetzalcoatl and he wrote that calendar to tell us when we were going through the galactic wait, center. That's when we reach our highest consciousness. Wait, Thoth, Thoth, Thoth was Quetzalcoatl? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. He sure was. He would, so wait, Quetzalcoatl you, you me became Quetzalcoatl in about 3013 BCE, August 11th. The reason that happened was he was in Egypt with Marduk. Who was Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar was, Nabu was one of uh, uh, Enki's sons. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar was one of the kings in Babylon that was named after Nabu. So they would name their kings after the, the various... The you know, previous... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So he was, he was a world ruler in Babylon. Well, they say that Asians are a species of gray. You know, like, a, or the gray aliens, that they are products of them, and that if you go, I, I, I want to say Malaysia, but one of those Asian countries, there's a very remote village where they claim they still look very alien like. It's possible. I don't know. That would be a stretch for me to go there, but. Uh, it's interesting, though, n- yeah. nonetheless. I just, I, do you think they're going to come down in our lifetime, or. or well, listen, or, I think they're already here. And the question is, are they going to disclose themselves right. to us anytime soon? Do you think? And I think, and I think, based on the number of Marvel comics, video shows that are coming out, and Movies, Hollywood, such, yes. they've been preparing us for the last 15 years to have yes. the idea that we could cohabitate with alien intelligence. Yes. So I think that's, that's part think. of the disclosure, and I think it's only, I think it's going to happen this year. I really think they're going to make themselves known. I and, think and, you know, I was watching this video I in Turkey so where, this, where this, uh, newscaster was doing a report on this on this doc. I don't know if you sent it to me or somebody else did, but all of a sudden, these three very large vessels showed up, kind of rose up from the ground right behind her, and all these people that were around on this dock rushed to the thing, to, to, to the railing to stand there and look at this, and she interrupted her interview and said, oh my god, look at that, and she's running back to show this. It was amazing. What was it? They, they, they are about to, they are about Were to they see. giants, or was it or was they were giant uh, vessels that were just they were, they were just plain, plain, plain day, just standing there, 
stationary over these buildings. Well, there was a, a, a picture in Argentina where there were a, a truck and some people standing there, and there was a giant being in a uh, silhouette from in the sunlight, and it, it was it was huge. This being was huge. Yeah. And um, there's that show, and you mentioned their conditioning us. It's like a, there's a show. It's it's a corny show. It's called Star Crossed, and it's about these uh, alien kids going to high school and how uh, they're oh, yeah. uh, they're separated off in their own thing, and the government's trying to integrate them with humans. And humans, it's it's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, but yeah. then the Noah, the new movie Noah, they're oh I know, isn't that great? I heard that's like a total. Uh, so. Really? It's got Russell uh, Crowe. I don't, I don't think it has the real Noah story. After you read the author hates and see the real Noah story. And why would they change it, it if it is? Well, that's is a good different. question, isn't it? And why now, too? Mm -hmm. Why now? It's part of the deception, by the way. Gerald, I, hope, I know that I only had you for tonight, but you've stayed twice as long as you said. I hope you and your wife come back and chat with us. And if you have free moments, come in and talk to us and and just shoot the breeze because we it goes off and on sometimes people get a little overloaded on the alien stuff in here so I'll play other things I'll even play Game of Thrones or I might be on cam acting goofy but if you ever message me on Skype and say hey I've got some free time do you guys want to have a chat tell me and you know you can you can plug your book and the yeah, yeah, yeah. comment well, gold and have fun at the same time because this is the most fun I've had ever <laughs> Well, I always have fun talking um, about battle that. Hockey, but, this uh, is... <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, encourage your readers to go to the website. Yes. Uh, GeraldClark77.com. Uh, I've got links to my Facebook and my YouTube channel and all and that stuff. And my wife's stuff is up there too. Yeah, is your wife's link on your website? Yeah, and, and also I want I want you uh, possibly to think about bringing her on, have her talk about her version. I of, would and, like uh, to bring her on, and, and she's a, she's a, she's an amazing part of the story too. No, I do want to have her on, and I want to talk. Um, I want her to tell us about the effects of these things that we can do to improve our health and what to stay away from and not to. And if she's into the the meditation and and the metaphysical stuff, she can give us. Hints on on, well, absolutely. on all absolutely. of that. Because uh, one, one clue I'll give you is uh, after you try Star Girl, mm -hmm. um, see what uh, walking out in the sunlight feels like. Yeah. You know, like, what's the difference in that? It's like, wow, I've what does that feel good? Try. What's that all about? Does it? Get water, you know, getting out of the shower, all of a sudden your energy feels really clean. You're like, whoa, I've never felt that before. Does it help with well, cancer, do you think? Like people suffer I'm not going to make medical. Well, no. I mean, just, do you think it, doing, do you think it could help? I'm not sure. Well, it's like one of those health products. You know, you have to say it. No, it doesn't. No. Whatever he so says here, it. guys, yeah. he's not uh, held responsible. These are all opinions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, I, I'm going to actually reserve that for her. I'm going to okay. let her have you, have you for a while. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about all that stuff. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Fascinated. Really. Yes. Thank you, Gerald. You rock. In okay. a major way. Have a great night. And, uh, you too. Thanks for, thanks for bringing this venue to all your listeners. Appreciate it. Yes, and uh, message fun. me on Skype, and, and that way, if she comes on, that way she can tell me what her nickname is, and I can, actually, I can do it right now. I can mod you. Uh, oh, mod did means you, that did if... Did you record this, by the way? Yeah, I, I can download it, and I can send oh, it to perfect. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, send it to me so we can, uh, we can have it too. Sure, and what I want to do is... Um, I want to mod. Can you type something in the chat really quick? Sure. Because sure. that way, if you come in and anyone's ever being rude while you're talking, all you have to do is scroll okay, over. That was, that was kind of smart. smart all yeah. you have to do is scroll over their name <laughs> and, and ban them. I typed something in there for you. Is that okay? Yeah. No. I am. Um, I. Uh, I'm, I just made you a mod, and that way, um, when if you message me on Skype and tell me your uh, wife's nickname that she makes. Um, and she can tell me when she's coming in. That way, I can make sure yeah, yeah. I can get well, the jerks well, I, out. I gave her website. It's artisticvegan.com. Reach out to her because she's got, you know, she's got uh, yes. people uh, following her blog. And what is it? Artistic so, what? Yeah. Artisticvegan.com. Artistic vegan. Yeah. Yes. And that way, when she comes on, I can make her a mod as well because they people can get offensive in here sometimes, and I don't want either one of you guys to ever not feel comfortable no, in here. Listen, it doesn't matter what's going on. We took the high road and uh, we just put out some information, right? So yes, uh, and it was gone, great. Whatever they do, that's cool. <laughs> it was right? great. Great, okay, great. Perfect. Listen, I really enjoyed it. You have a wonderful night. You too. Good, Good night to you and okay. your wife. See you later. Talk soon.
Well, that was awesome. That was just too awesome. Did you guys like that? What did you think? Was that not awesome? Thank you. Thank you. I got someone cool to come on here and talk to us. Ah. Oh, that was just too good. That was too good. What I want to do, though, I want to stop the broadcast and then I'll, I'll restart because I want this um, I want this to be uh, its own download without me adding a bunch of crap afterwards so I'll be right back